Okay. Can you guys hear me now? You can. Okay, cool. <laughs> I have my headphones on the wrong thing. <laughs> um, okay. Man, did you guys... Uh... So we're flying by the seat of our pants tonight because this is a new streaming software and we are uh, working it out as we can. Hey, Savon, we are live. Do you know how... I don't see it, I don't see it live on the... Um... On the, I don't see it live on YouTube. You say we're live, but I don't believe you. Did you? You guys want to see something cool? Because I don't believe we're live. Look at, look at, <laughs> see that green circle around Jason. What's Kate? What are you laughing at, Kate? <laughs> I don't know. Just whatever you're about to show us. <laughs> look at, look at, look at uh, Jason Hopper. Um. Oh, you, the green circle, the yeah. close friend circle. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> You guys are look tight. At the, look at this guy hey, next to him. I have a trick for you. I have a really cool hack for you on Instagram. Tell me. You know, you know, like obviously the close friends shows a green circle around the profile picture on your like story thing at the top. Yes. If when you do your stories, if you put one of the COVID stickers, like the let's get vaccinated sticker or like the whatever sticker, it will push your story to like the front of the line and puts a big purple circle around your story. So you get like, way more views and way more exposure and you can is that I really think you true can, is that really true yeah like i've been doing it occasionally and i've seen some other people that are like you know oh, we're not live with, sorry kate hold on hold on sorry you're, you're saying right. good shit yo we are not fucking live yeah i'm not i'm not exactly sure why though god damn it <laughs> um what I it, it, it's interesting because it says we're live, yeah, but I don't see us on our YouTube station, which makes me wonder what station we are live on. I'm gonna do it for my end. No, I can't. Yeah, you need to host the show. Um, but I think we could both be in uh, logged in on the same hosting screen. We can. I think so. Stand yeah, because it says we are live on. On YouTube, it's public. Issue. Okay, let me see if I can. Let's see something here. Good evening, James. We are uh, troubleshooting something here. I'm here. Oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Yes, go ahead. Okay. I'm not sure why, but my heart rate is at like 170 right now. <laughs> Okay, I got it. But we need uh, Stavon back. <laughs> okay. Now it says there's one person watching. Damn. I'm alive. What was wrong? How'd you fix it? God damn it. Sorry, guys. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. Okay. Video and here for the first time. About this thing about ejaculating, but it wasn't nice. Uh, Kate, <laughs> do you really think that that... Um... Oh, shit. Oh, everyone left. Everyone got kicked out. Oh, everyone's back. <laughs> everyone's back. I don't everyone's know. Everyone's back. <laughs> ah! 
You guys were using new software where you're using StreamYard. In the past, we've always used Riverside FM. Um, and I'm really excited because I think this is going to take care of a lot of problems. I'm going to go check it out. Is this video made for kids? No. Bam. No, I think we're good. I, I believe we're live. Yeah, cool. Monetization is yeah. off. That's bad. <laughs> Make the motherfucking money. I'm gonna try to edit that. Watch this. I'm gonna try to I edit got, that. I got it. I got it. It's damn, done. you're good. Damn, you're good. It's a race. And you lost. <laughs> Do you guys still see the call in number or did we lose it? Oh, I got we lost it. I'll put it back in. You guys, we got a call in number because we're kind of a real show. How many podcasts do that? Do any other podcasts do that? The Just number this is this awesome one. Just this nine. Awesome one. To oh, you can see people commenting. Eight. Yes. If you guys five, go over eight. to the comments, you can click it and you can see them coming in. <laughs> oh, boy. And then, uh, James, I got all of your topics here on banners. Wait, you can see the topic? Oh, man, that is really going to distract the shit out of James. He's not capable of multitasking like that. That's like... <laughs> What was James, that? Sorry, I missed that. I missed James, that. James, can that? you what do you this? <laughs> can James, can you do this? What'd you and say? And this at the same time? I don't get it. I, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Whatever. It's okay. It's, it's showing off. I'm not going to let you pull me down right now, man. <clears throat> Life. Live call in number. I pin the message. Oh, question for you, Sevon. Go ahead, Mr. David Parker. Go ahead ask away james how do you feel about the news today i like the news a lot today um kate before before we got cut off kate was telling us about a conspiracy theory tell us about that theory because oh, i don't know if that's yes. true kate i don't know if it's true it's not I've the kind of conspiracy theory you want to hear james it's a crap one it's really bad okay so on instagram you see different colored circles for like a news story a story you've watched it goes like uh you know gray and then a close friend story is green but if you put the vaccination sticker on your story it comes up as like purple with like a pretty line and it brings it to the front of the queue so apparently if you use that you get way more exposure and people viewing your stories so I'm telling Saban to start putting that in his stories and see what happens to the views that he gets. I was I'm thinking the gay flag would launch me to the top. I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> hey, where? Yeah, on everything. <laughs> so so I just took a picture of the screen, and it says, let's get vaccinated. You're saying I should pick that? Yeah, so put that okay. on and then put okay. something over top of it. You can hide it, apparently. I don't even care. I don't even care. I'll put You're it just going to put it on? Knows. Yeah, just put it on. Let's get back. And also, it. I have another fact for you guys. On all dating apps now, people can put in stickers on oh. their profile to say if they're vaccinated or not. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I like it when the tough guys put, like, um, for their pronoun, they put, like, I own a gun. I just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just shit like that. Hey, look at I'm purple. You're right. Yeah, there you go. You're purple, back, man. You're back. I'm purple. purple. You're gonna get. You're gonna get the opposite of shadow band. Imagine if they pulled you back on for that. <laughs> Look at the kind of eye candy I follow. I follow Jason Hopper, the Liver King, and Allison NYC. Oh, the Liver King. My buddy of mine's been sending me his stuff. He is Jack, but God, his diet's disgusting. Just does he eat balls. liver? So Raw you're right. Is that why he's I'm Roll friends with him a little bit. I've oh. talked to him on the phone a few times. I'm friends with him a little bit. Well, good on him. I'm impressed. I'm a fan of his fortitude, but... I want to touch his body. Yeah, you should because, ask him to. Because look how hard his body looks. <laughs> Wait, let me see. <laughs> look, at, look at this. Come on, guys. Look at this. Jeez. Yeah, he looks amazing. So what happens I, when you eat the most nutritionally dense food on the planet. I'd put your balls in my mouth, Hobart, <laughs> to be that hard. Would you? Sure, why not? <clears throat> put that to the test. Just once a year, lick the underside of another dude's sack so you could be that hard. Done. No problem. God damn, he eat, yeah, he eats eggs and bacon and shit. Hey, um, did you have a birthday party today? Hey, this guy actually offered to sponsor the Matt, Josh, and Sevon podcast. He should. You should have let him. The liver with, like King? big money. Josh said. Uh, Josh and uh, Josh, Matt didn't want the money. It was. It was. It was. It was really good money too. I was really disappointed. I take this guy's supplements. I wish he'd sponsor my podcast. This podcast. What's What's the Liver King pulling in? 
<clears throat> man, the, he, he, you know, he makes those supplements that like, um, Paul Saladino makes too. The, oh, like um, the dehydrated, like liver powder. Cock and balls. Yeah. Actually, hey, here, isn't that the, funny? Isn't that the funny? Deal. They do have, they have dehydrated like cock and balls, but he doesn't sell like dehydrated cow uterus. None of the, none of the girl parts get sold on the market. That's fucking interesting. That is some sexist shit. Why don't we get some desecrated ovaries? Okay, it's desecrated, not <laughs> Whatever. desecrated. Whatever. No Whatever. one needs it. Okay, hey, let's, hey. I'm just going to glaze over the fact that you said the phrase desecrated I ovaries. desecrate female ovaries all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> Check my IG. <laughs> you, you could barely desecrate a stick of gum, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's the right word? What's the right word? I think it's desiccate. Okay. Matt, like but what does that word actually mean? Do you know, Matt? It's like pounded. Is that what it is? dehydrated or something i could be wrong though it's like a, what um what a hobart semen looks like two weeks after the games for the next two weeks just poof <laughs> it means to it just a cobweb shoots out <laughs> <laughs> it caught it actually just coughs it goes, <laughs> oh Kate, caitlin ralph is saying which is a fucking trippy name you got one of each um oh she's, she, oh, she's lgbq too she's bi-spirited um actually paul saldino is selling dehydrated female parts well shit what do I know? Oh, desiccated, lacking vitality or interest, like all my news stories tonight. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> um, That's I, a I good had a burn on yourself. I had a, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Stay humble. Can everyone hear us okay? How's the did audio? You, uh, did you have a birthday well, party today? So it was good. Did you go to a birthday party? Uh, no, I went to uh, my son had one yesterday. Where'd you see it? On uh, your mom's Instagram. Oh shit! My mom accepted you as a follower. That is bullshit. Yeah, man. I want. I have one question. Did you eat? Did you eat any cake? Because I saw there was a cake. No, sir. And I cut the cake. And I saw that. Yeah, I cut the cake. And uh, yeah, no, I did not have a piece. And you know, it wasn't even hard. It wasn't even difficult. Yeah, check out Caitlin's comment. My uncle's name is Ralph. Ralph. That's. <laughs> That's... Well, I don't get. My uncle's name is. Wow, is that true? I hope so. That's some straight. That's hardcore masculinity shit. I should have named. I Whoa, you know I had you, how, three how, how, dogs and I wanted to name all of them the same name: Caesar, Caesar, and Caesar. So you just call one and all three of them come. <laughs> the chick I was the chick I was sleeping with at the time it wouldn't let me. She's like, no. I was like, all right. I'm man. I'm glad that was wise. <laughs> Sevon, even your camera looked sharper. So I I bought the five hundred dollar. <laughs> you don't think all dogs should have the same name? You think that's bad? Or you think it was? I don't think it's bad. So I just I think it might be. <laughs> I think it would affect my <laughs> both. <laughs> my camera looks better because we paid five hundred dollars for Streamyard, and that's the upgraded version. We could do at ten eighty, so well, that's pretty is, cool. You, this is paid for service. I mean, look at us, yeah, and it's good. it's and it's smart too. It puts Kate in the middle. Is five hundred dollars for like the whole year, or a month, or one podcast? Uh, per podcast, five hundred per podcast. Oh yeah, we we got to get those sixty nine dollar donations up. <laughs> It's for the year. I want to say it was like four sixty eight for the year or something. I would have tipped him a dollar. Thank you. Yeah, everyone should tip us a dollar today for upgrading the. Well, don't actually don't do that yet. The audio because there's still time for the audio to drop out. Last week was all Hobart's fault, by the way. It was. I was in a. I was in a hotel. Yeah, like hotel Wi Fi, right? Yeah, I even bought like the premium upgrade. Scam. Do you really believe that? Do you think that that's true? Tyson, actually, I have a story about Tyson Fury tonight. Someone just put in a comment about him. Let's start there. Well, first, ask Kate if Kate knows who that even is. Kate, Sexist. do you know who Tyson Sexist. Fury is? Mm -mm. No. Wow. Sexist and accurate, Sevon. Good job. <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna get there. It's it's probably halfway down the list, so we'll be. I'll see. We might not get there tonight. <laughs> yeah, we might not. I want to be educated tonight, though. I want to learn this. Do you guys follow this guy's meme account, this Wad Zombie dude? He's uh, the one who puts up all the videos, right, of the podcast? Yes, yes. He's made some videos, yes. He did some cool ones with, like, music and you talking, and it was super motivating, and I felt like I was watching, like, an epic movie. Like, oh, a, who's good. that guy? Tony Robbins? Like a Tony Robbins clip? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Had some, like, movie score behind it. You were talking about robbing kids of an opportunity to stand up and do a squat. Wow. It was good. It was good. Hey, you know, speaking of Tony Robbins, you know, he's, 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 he's abandoning the woke crowd. He's finally like, he's had enough. He was over there with the Hollywood elites and he's done. What, what is, all right, we're going to, 
path tangent. <laughs> um, what what is the woke crowd, Savant? God, there's this book. It's called Woke Inc. And I just started reading it. I want to have the author on. I, I heard the book takes a horrible turn at the end because the author believes that government in, intervention is the um, cure for wokeness. But he has a definition. Well, it is of the woke. cure for wokeness. Uh, China, you know, it, it just it's not the cure for the way that anyone would ever want it. Um, it, it's the enforcement. Uh, what does that say? Alert to injustice in society, especially racism. No, that is not what woke is. That's what it used to be. That's not what it is now. That's what it was like. Like, like that was like one of those words. Like, like uh, the BLM crew used to say, like to each other, "Stay woke, stay woke." Like, stay super alert. That's not what it is now. Woke is like the opposite of enlightenment. It is like to take offense and blame people for everything instead of taking personal responsibility. And their big subjects are climate change, <laughs> racism, and sexism. But it's never. But it. But it's just all. It's when you're trapped in your head and you're projecting your shit onto someone else. Like the perfect example is when I told Danielle Brandon that her shirt was too big, a shirt she was wearing, and people started calling, saying I was sexist and that a man should has no. She no one cares what a man thinks. It's like, and then calling me a misogynist for saying her shirt's too big. And it's like, dude, like I, there was no reference to cock and balls, vagina or nothing. There was nothing, <laughs> has nothing to do with her sex. If she has, I don't, I'm not even guaranteed. I'm not even sure Danielle Brandon's a girl, but her shirt regardless is too, was too big. And what's funny is, is like, I, I explain that to people. I'm like, Hey, your obsession with penis and vagina in a situation when there is no penis and vagina, uh, like I get it, you're trapped in your head, but don't project it onto me. That's that's your issue of thinking it's a man or woman thing. And what's cool is is that Danielle Brand didn't even reposted that. And then these motherfuckers tried to dox me. There's an account called You look like a man. Yeah, you look like a yeah. dude. <laughs> and they tried to dox me, but I don't think they could because you can't tag me because I'm already shadow banned. So then someone <laughs> sent me a screenshot of their shit trying to dox me. So I reposted it saying, look at these motherfuckers. This account, if you want to know what an account looks like, demands women feel sorry for themselves and demands women play the victim. This is your account. If you need an excuse to be a piece of shit and blame other people, this is your account. And you know what they did? They reported me to Instagram for bullying and the shit got pulled down. And I got a ding on myself for bullying. Oh, another ding. I got the dinged for crowd, bullying by the bullies. The woke crowd exists on the internet. Like it fucking exists on the internet. And it's a group of like just virtue signalers that haven't got bigger problems in their life. You know, I feel like if we were in another world war, like things that people are pushing wouldn't exist because they would have bigger problems. A corporate America is entirely woke. What corporate America is doing is they are based there. And, and so everyone's scared to death of the woke crowd. So if you have a job or if you make money or if you're if you're in the economy, you're terrified of the woke crowd because you can't like you can't say something to Danielle Brandon like, hey, girl, your shirt's too big because you'll get fucked. They'll say racist or sexist or homophobic. Let's say Danielle Brandon was gay. I don't know if she's really, then the, the gay crowd could have been like come after him and like I shouldn't even say the gay crowd. The gay crowd's too smart for this shit. The woke crowd would come after me and be like <laughs> and they claim everyone. You know what I mean? They claim it's the like cancel people. culture, right? Yeah, I mean, they're horrible. They're the opposite of enlightenment. They're people who are trapped in their head and project all of their insecurities onto other people. It's nuts. <laughs> like, like, like they go to they go to a job interview and they have thirty five rings in their nose and they leave there going, "I didn't get the job because of my nose rings." <laughs> that was that was painting with a broad brush, but. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just watched this documentary on HBO Max called 15 Minutes of Shame. And I did have a story about it. I was going to be my recommendation of the week. Um, but it didn't get terribly good reviews in this one. This one article I was referencing tonight. I just thought it was really interesting because they go into the discussion of um, sh online shaming, cancel culture, culture on the Internet. What and was one the movie? Of the uh, 15 Minutes of Shame. It's on oh. uh, HBO Max. And um, I th actually think Monica Lewinsky uh, was one of the producers of the film, which is interesting. That's a whole nother uh, can of worms. There we go. Um, but what's scary in, in the movie, they talk about how certain organizations or bad actors basically pay people to rent their social media accounts just to uh, troll other people and talk shit and, you know, perpetuate online shaming. What and, do you mean? Uh, like, so someone would pay me like, they would see I have 90,000 followers and they would pay me money to – oh, speaking of 90,000 followers, did you guys notice I put my new Instagram account under my name? Mm. So if you want to get live notifications of us going live, follow that shit. Um, and I don't and, – and if you hate all my 
like truth truth spitting follow that too because i won't do any of that on that that's just gonna be like pictures of hobart and kate and me and my kids um family <laughs> we family, yes what was to say say what what was, what was i about to go off on hobart well i was it was uh, in the movie they they talk about how um essentially private actors or organizations are oh renting and they rent my account so they can rent my account from me and beat up like someone could pay me ten thousand bucks and I'd look the other way and they use my account for a week to just destroy Kate. Well, yeah, exactly. And from what I from what I understood, it this isn't something that was necessarily happening inside of the U.S., but more so happening outside of the U.S. Um, I was just really shocked. It kind of makes you feel like there's no escape from it. Like every time just, someone attacks me, I put on followers. Like if I'm you, completely <laughs> shadow banned to fucking hell and back, and these fucking idiots tried to attack me and I put on two hundred followers overnight. It was crazy. <laughs> That's good. bam. But hey, here's the thing: the whole the whole medical community, the whole vaccine conversation is com completely been hijacked by the woke crowd. Because the truth is, is that people who eat like shit, who are generally obese, are the reason we're in the situation we are in right now. It's just a complete neglect of people's and and lack of lack of self responsibility, lack of personal accountability, lack of personal um just like taking care of their house, their body that's put us in this situation. So basically people have allowed themselves to get so sick that now the wind is blowing and they're dying. And it's like, well, you shouldn't die from the wind blowing. And so instead of the, everyone saying, okay, everyone buckle down and like, take care of yourself. Did you guys know this is a live call-in show? Oh shit. <laughs> Oklahoma city. Hey, what's up, Unabomber? How you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Great manifesto. You? Great manifesto. Hope they lock your ass away forever. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? With Kate and Hobart, couldn't be better on a Sunday night, finishing up my last 15 hours of fasting. Nice. That's awesome. I actually have a question for Kate and Hobart about uh, what do they – think the most underutilized CrossFit or just movement in general um, is. I know this is one of your relatives <laughs> trying to give you guys some airtime, and I resent <laughs> that shit. We Thanks. need it. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Kate, you want to go first? What's your mom needs to get it? off the testosterone, by the way. It's the 15 minutes. Someone's hijacked someone else's friend to call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, most underrated movement. I kind of want to like zoom out even further and be like, look, the most underrated thing is just fucking exercise in general. <laughs> like people just need to be less sedentary overall, but within CrossFit, most underrated movement. Uh, so I'm going to say air squats because I did a workout with just like good old plain unweighted air squats the other day. And I'm like, fuck those things are, those things are bad. Those things are bad in a good way. Um, I also really like things like pistols. Like I love anything that's a single unilateral movement. Um, the more simple and the more like deceptive, the more I like it. Hey, what about, um, Kate, what about candlesticks? Like the one where like, instead of like doing like, it's like a cheating pistol, you know, like I squat down on one foot, I do the negative and then I roll to my back and then I swing mm -hmm. my arms down and kick my heel to my butt to stand up as like a, do you like that for a, um, scale pistol? I do those. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For a scaled version or anything with a bit of assistance is cool. And then I get my my abs. I get my abs working too. <laughs> get a little hollow rock in there. Yep. Oh, nice. Fuck you, Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you knew you knew I was thinking about you there, Savon. I think a strict press. And that's just because I, I agree with an air squat 100. I just think everyone says air squat, so. I'm gonna say strict press. Hey, I, no um, one does I know you didn't ask up. me. No one I'm gonna say anything negative. Body shit. Yeah. Or, I'm gonna yeah. say anything negative. Negative muscle ups. Jump to the top and do a slow negative. I'm gonna say anything negative. I know you didn't ask me, but yeah, they they know that you. all you do is ride the assault bike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wrote it backwards right, today. Right. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. And, and and bench press and pull ups, right, Simone? I did actually. Today is my fasting day, and I did uh, assault bike, um, bench, heavy bench press, uh, heavy deadlift, and weighted pull up, like a couple reps of each, and then back to the assault bike, ten rounds. Yep. Yeah. And yesterday was the first day I didn't work out in probably fucking three thousand years. It was crazy. 
that did not work Whoa. out. How'd you feel? I felt great this morning. <laughs> Do you think you'll take a couple more rest days here and there? No, no, that was too hard. That's bad for my mental health. That was horrible. Oh, some guy says sumo dead the high pool. What do you think about that? That's a pretty good one. I just, I mean, it's a movement. People probably need to practice more in the CrossFit ecosystem, but I just, no one does enough strict upper body pressing or pulling. It just, no one does enough of it. I do. No, you don't. Yeah. I'm seeing your shoulder. <laughs> um, <laughs> That hurt. I don't mean that. I'm that sorry. That was mean. Hurt. That was mean. Someone, I take that back. I take that back. Someone screenshot right after he said that, and that's my hurt face. Whatever I, know, you guys I don't saw. mean that. That was mean. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm not letting you off the hook. It's because I just worked stuff. out. I'm all fired up. I'm like, I ate, I ate half a steak before I came on the show. Matt Souza, you're a wizard, says Caleb Beaver. Oh, come on. That's not a name. That's the name. C- hey, if you so his name, initials like, are Caleb, C. Beaver. But- <laughs> i gotta hate myself mr oklahoma do you have anything else to say uh i have one more question i think i feel like the devil press has made it like more into the mainstream media is there any other like movement um that you think um crossfit needs to incorporate no devil press hopefully makes its way right (laughs) out of mainstream media (laughs) what is that what is the devil press (laughs) It's like a burpee with a double dumbbell snatch. You know, you lie down with the bur- uh, with the dumbbells and you like swing them up over your head afterwards. Yeah, it's way too old for that. Shit. It's a burp. The re- it's a burpee ground overhead, but mm. Hobart's mom is stuck on sixty seven in Kate's armpit. Yeah, that'll be the last time she watches the show. <laughs> she actually, my mom really liked the last show, so that's oh, terrifying. Man. That is terrifying. <laughs> Have you seen the Netflix doc Fiona Oaks? No, I have not. I'll put it on the list, Ray. We don't even have the same stuff on Netflix down here. It's like a whole different library of movies in Australia. So I, I've never even of it. We're so far behind. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I had no idea. That's really true. Mm. Yeah, because when I've traveled to other countries, I've noticed like there are certain shows I would try to watch and I couldn't watch in that from that IP. Yeah. I wonder if my wife's watching the show, if she would make me another cup of coffee. <laughs> Is Brian friend, friend fired from the prod podcast? No, he can come on any one. I should have sent him a link tonight. Matt, you want to send him a link? See if he shows up. He's always welcome. Mehmet. Adinili. Mehmet. Turkish. Mehmet. Are you Turkish? Mehmet. What do you guys think? Guess? Anyone? Yeah, Hector Oklahoma, says, are we hanging up on you or are you Hector hanging says, up yourself? What's going on? No. What's going on? What I, 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 I'm going to hang up, but I just want to say thank you guys for um, doing the news. It's very entertaining. And then um, to be able to call in and have a resource um, like you three and, uh, with all the knowledge. So I appreciate it. Dude, you're a boss. Thanks for making us feel like someone watches the show by calling. Uh, of course. Later. Bye. I knew it. Turkish. Yes. Living in Dallas. Mehmet. At least you picked a good state. Are you born in the country, Mehmet? World record holder for seven continent marathon runner. That's wow. the Fiona Oaks, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a woman. A dude needs to take that from her. <laughs> okay, let's go. What ready to start? Yeah, let's ready to start. Right, I got to pee. Do... I, if the next caller who calls in, you guys got, I already have to pee. How many minutes <laughs> into the show are we? <laughs> like 20. Fuck me. All right, we're going to do some. We're going to start off with some follow ups from last week. We're going to start talking about that oil spill going off the coast of California near Huntington Beach. A week later, the region and its signature beaches appear to have been spared a potentially calamitous fate, though the long term toll on plant and animal life remains unknown. As we talked about last week, the Coast Guard estimates a minimum of about 25,000 gallons, 95,000 liters for my friends across the pond. Of Thank oil you. spilled from of oil spilled from because any because that's neither number helps me understand how much <laughs> oil it was. Of oil spilled from a ruptured pipeline off the shores of Orange County, and no more than one hundred thirty-two thousand gallons or five hundred thousand liters. That's a lot of bottles of soda. Um, yes, yeah, Vaughn. Uh, so, what was the total? <laughs> go back. What, what was the total number of gallons spilled altogether? They don't really know. 
something between twenty five thousand and a hundred and thirty two thousand. It doesn't seem like very much. Um, uh, Susa, how many gallons of um, water are in an Olympic sized pool? Do we know? Someone's got to know that. S- Sevon has a bladder the size of a hung field mouse. I don't know what a hung field mouse is, but I like it better than a field mouse. I think he's saying you got a tiny bladder, but. As far as field mice go, you're you're, pack, you're packing dick. heat. I got yeah. a huge <laughs> cock for a field mouse. I don't know if that's like- <laughs> this this one time. I hope he pulls up a picture of a field mouse. Oh wow! <laughs> oh dude, come on, man! The, only a hundred gallons of oil spilled. One hundred thirty-two thousand. So one sixth the size potentially of an Olympic. Swimming Jesus pool. Christ! That's nothing. Whatever. Okay. Well, who cares? <laughs> Moving on. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck. That's probably good for the ocean. Nope. No, you don't think. No. <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy too about that? I, I don't remember what the stat is, but it's something like you could pour like I forget how many gallons of water and uh, of oil, and it would cover the whole top of Lake Tahoe or something. I heard some stat on that once. It can spread so thin and cover the whole. It's like nothing. So it is pretty bad. I don't. I don't mean to talk shit. Especially if it stops the um, whatever that transfer of oxygen and O2, whatever happens at the surface of the ocean. Well, as the crude has drifted south, tar balls have appeared on beaches about 50 miles from the original site or 80 kilometers. An ominous sign that the impact on the environment is widening. One um, advocacy commentator said, we just don't know what the impacts are going to be. Sad to say it's still early. Because of the spill, fishing has been barred for miles off of the shore of Orange County. So don't swim in Huntington Beach right now and don't fish. When I went to school at UC Santa Barbara, the beaches were covered with tar. All 10 years I was an undergrad there, and I always had tar on the bottom of my feet, in my hair, on my back, everywhere. There was no talk of oil spill. I don't know, just there's always tar. It's not like that in Australia? No. (laughs) Trip. And we had oil. We had oil derricks right off the coast. Do you guys have oil derricks off your coast? Like, do you look out into the ocean and you see? No, like you a- can't see them. Oh. No. Nah. Wow. That was Greg just driving away from Kate's house, pissed. You that? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not me. <laughs> Ten point eight million gallons were spilled with the Exxon Valdez. Holy shit. <laughs> That's 20 Olympic pools. Nice math. Thank you. Moving on. Yes, please. All right. Another someone follow. Please call in so I can pee. <laughs> another hey, follow. said I have the bladder the size of a walnut. <laughs> I like that better than a field mouse, but whatever. A hung walnut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another follow from last week. We're going to talk about those Pandora papers, which consist of millions of leaked financial documents. Do you think so. my balls are larger than my bladder? That would be weird. That'd be be not good okay sorry 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 pandora sorry i All mean right. I, you would have to have a really s- like, like what if my bladder was like this big? enormous like i think bladders are pretty big okay check that out how big is a bladder like the size of a softball i i, I when i drink a shitload of water i pee like right away and for years ago i don't know like three years ago i was like worried like something might be wrong with me but it's been like this since i've been a little kid but anyway i went for like the doctor checkup and a fucking, and I had to have two doctors put their finger in my ass. I told you that, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a finger in your ass, but it is fucking not good. And you it's had like two of them in there, a separate, <laughs> two separate times. I had like the, the, I had like the regular doctor, and then like the expert doctor. And I'm like telling the, I when I went to the, oh, expert I doctor, thought I'm they like, both hey, went in there at once. I don't, <laughs> I, I listen to me. You fucking assholes in medicine. I already fucking hate you guys. But listen, the dude who sticks the finger in the guy's ass, just start me with the expert. I don't want to start with fucking like Hobart, who's just like a general practitioner, and then him be like, hmm, I'm not sure what's going on in there, and then send me to Kate. Just send me to fucking Kate. <laughs> there's some pra- there's some like some procedures where you just go straight to the top, and the finger in the ass is one of them. I don't need a fucking second opinion. Just give me the dude who's going to give me the second opinion fucking a and then they tell me it's fine they even did a little like scan of like my midsection they're like oh your bladder empties out fine you're fine i'm like you motherfucker and you know what i'm thinking the whole time these dudes don't want it to just to make myself feel better i'm like these dudes don't want to stick their finger in my ass any more than i want their finger in my ass right you don't know that 
I don't. You're an asshole. <laughs> It God, seems I like hope, you're really upset about you get this. A, I hope fucking you get Shaquille O'Neal as your doctor when you go to get your <laughs> fucking ass out of checks. Me too. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. All right. Another follow up from last week. The Pandora. Wait, we got a caller. We got a caller. We got a caller. Oh, that means you get to go pee. Pandora. All right, Kate, you're talking to this guy. What's up, brother? How are you, wireless caller? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for being patient. I just want to. Uh, no, I came in a weird spot in that conversation. <laughs> it's um, never not a wet spot. <laughs> that's true. No, Devon, I wanted to say thanks for trying to meet up today. I appreciate it. Oh, you were at you were at Blue Ball. Yeah. Where are you now? You're at the hotel. Yeah, we're just chilling down by the down by the beach. Is your name really Eric? It is really Eric. Yes. Oh, it's cool. just the Liver King. No, this is <laughs> yeah. just some dude on Instagram who like was like, "Hey, we should meet up. I'm going to be in town with my kids." And I used to do that shit, but it kind of just started getting a little weird. But then he said he was going to Blue Ball Park, which is right by my house, so I was going to do that. But today got crazy. I ended up going to my kids' uh, tennis tournament. I kind of forgot about it, like, on and off all day. You wouldn't have liked me today anyway, Eric. I, I'm um, I'm fasting today. I'm not fun. <laughs> no, that's all right. I appreciate it. I just wanted to call in and say thanks. You guys rock. Cool. Um, Who do you think is having the best hair day, me, Kate, or James? Oh, Hobart, for sure. Oh, geez. Every time. Oh, geez. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. If Kate goes back, Kate needs to go back to the long hair. Wait, she got yeah, long hair back the, there, doesn't she? No, 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 no. I had a uh, Svetlana. I don't know if you can see it. This is short. Svetlana was my extensions. She got removed. <laughs> I'm a lot lighter. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, Eric. Thanks, brother. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope. Man. I hope people want to come to your town and play with you and your kids soon. If they haven't already. Well, I don't have any kids, but if they want to. I don't give a. What's that? I don't give a. How about you? Just some, like, some, some, some. What you do? I heard you got a new man. I see you taking the pig. It's just some um, sound effects that my, my board has that I never I was going to say, it's like something where somebody would say something and you'd play it and be like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then it's like, you just stop. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Look, I don't give a I'm going to use that next time Hobart says something. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything for the rest of the got a new man. I see you take <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Okay, Pandora. Jesus, this is a serious issue. <sighs> Pandora Papers, which, if you forgot, consists of millions of leaked financial documents that were reviewed and analyzed for two years, thank goodness, by more than 100 news outlets, including the Washington Post and the BBC. Woke, 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 woke. The Washington Post is solely woke, and the BBC is run by the U.S. government. Just, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not like saying that like that's bad or that's good, that you, but you should know your source. David Smith, how can I help you? Hello. Uh, I just wanted to ask how your kid's tennis tournament did. I'm a big uh, tennis fan. He did. He did. Three, awesome. Um, zero oh and three, and and you know what? Until next week, until there's another fucking tournament, that's going to be his nickname. I'm just going to call him that all week. <laughs> oh and three. Did he split sets at all? Did he what? Did he leak one? Of, did he leak one of set in one of his matches? What, what is that guy talking English? What did he say? Yeah, he, man. Did don't you this? understand tennis? Did he split a set at all? Or did he just get smoked the whole time? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I know. I don't understand tennis. I just saw that the other kid wasn't crying. <laughs> and my kid was so crying. Usually, usually they play two out of three sets. And I don't remember. No, no. He won a couple sets. He won a couple sets. Um, hold okay, on. Someone, right. I'm going to text this. We had a, another caller call where you're calling. Call back. And I'm texting. Okay. Call back later. No, no. You stay on. Let's talk about my kids. No. Okay. So I went to the tennis tournament. And I went onto the floor. Um, while he was warming up and the tennis instructor told me to get the fuck out of there and told me, and then I came down like after like a game or two and I was talking to my kid and I'm like, Hey dude, you need to wake the fuck up, dude. You're just, you're just acting. You're just out here like a fucking weirdo. Like you're not doing anything. You're great in practice. I want to see that. Then the coach came over to me again, told me not to come down to the courts again. <laughs> and then I just bit the inside of my cheek and that was that, but I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. I'm just, I'm just giving him a hard time. It's really cool. He's six. Everyone else there is like 10. So they're playing on the short courts, like the 10 under courts with the big foam ball? No, they play on a full-size court, um, but they play with a what's called a number two ball. Do you know that ball? It's, I think it's called an orange ball. Yeah, yeah. Orange ball, yeah. Orange. Is, are you a tennis instructor? Yeah, I coach college tennis, actually. Holy shit. Yeah. Where, do you, where do you live? I live in Colorado. <laughs> Too far. I need someone to hit oh, where, balls where to my Colorado? kid on Monday mornings. 
<laughs> I live in Grand Junction, Colorado. Do you guys know where that is? I live I live up in Frederick, just north of um, Denver. Oh, nice. How far are we away? Uh, four hours-ish. Oh, holy shit. Three and a half. I'm on the west side of Colorado, 20 miles from Utah. Oh, cool. Are you a good tennis yep. coach? Uh, I think I'm all right, but you know, that's my college tennis. That's my player. Terrible. Hey, David, <laughs> my kid's the real deal. Like, he don't do no pancake serves. You don't allow your kids to pancake serve, do you? No, no. So he's already switched to a continental grip. That's good because that's one of the hardest things to break on a tennis player. Yeah. What's see? a pancake serve? So think about like holding like a frying pan, how you'd hold a frying pan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of kids. They serve right. like that. It's how you serve, it's Kate. Easy to it's hold, how you so serve. Yeah, the... it's how I play. <laughs> yes, it's how everyone serves until someone tells you different, and then you're like, you could watch ten, ten, right, David? You could like I've watched. I, I don't know. My life, I've watched probably like twenty hours of tennis, and I've never noticed that. I mean, I know that's not very much, but before the the coach, but I was just sitting there one day in his private class, and the coach is teaching him how to serve, and then I'm like, oh fuck! Basically, Kate, David, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you, but it's a little delayed. Okay, but basically they swing the tennis racket at you like an axe, and at the last minute they turn it and hit it. Yeah, yeah, that's and it's exactly right. fucking nuts. It's like the most technical thing, and it's so crazy. And to and I to oh my kid's seven now, but to watch the coach try to teach my kid that, I'm like I could never do that. I actually so, yeah, really enjoy you, watching people whack balls like on tennis courts. It's fucking sick. Yeah, it is sick. Yeah. So the cue we use to fix that is. We always tell them to let their palm, their palm face their ear as they're serving. Uh, and then you pronate. And then you pronate. That's how you get the maximum stand. I'm going to start giving high fives like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come in sideways and then open up at the last Just minute. Smash people. <laughs> Aggressive high five. <laughs> no more hey, pancake yeah. high fives for me. Do you, think, right. do you think there's any dudes who masturbate with um, uh, two-dimensional masturbation? Like they do this, no, like this. and like this at the like same this. time? <laughs> well, yeah. Every, everyone's tried that. Like if, you, like if you have a dude sleeping to the right and left of you and you don't want to wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you been oh, in that scenario? <laughs> it seems like a lot. It seems, like a lot. <laughs> seems real familiar. If you want strangers, though, you just sit on your hand till it goes numb and then use that oh yes like a stranger wow <laughs> wow i'm gonna try that one tonight <laughs> <laughs> That's there's, good. there's these three guys and uh here we go it's a it's a it's a really cold night and um they, they all have to sleep right next to each other it's super duper cold and they're, they're all t- tucked in squeezed in really close together and they wake up in the morning and the guy on the left's like this is crazy, guys. I just had my first wet dream in like 20 years. Nuts. And the guy on the right's like, dude, I had my first wet dream in like 20 years too. This is crazy. And they look at the guy in the middle. He goes, shit, I don't know what you guys were dreaming about. I was dreaming that I was an Olympic skier. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I don't get it. So can you drop a picture? <laughs> hey, do you know what? Those are the kind of jo- I've known that joke since the second grade. I can tell. <laughs> And I didn't even know what masturbating was in the second grade, but I knew that joke. No, that's when you used to just slam it into the refrigerator door to get your phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> just stand in front of a fan. Uh, that's good. Okay, Pandora. Hey, can, I, can I ask the CrossFit coaches a serious question now? Kate and... Yeah, Savan's um, out. He's so going to the bathroom. Also- Okay. Well, I'm also like a PE teacher at a high school here in town. And I was wondering, do you guys do like scholarships for people who want to get their level one that can't afford it? Like me. <laughs> How about? Oh, yeah, no, no. Um, short answer is I, I think it kind of depends, but um, you should shoot an email to seminars at CrossFit.com. Start there. Okay. Um, and let's, let's go from there. Got it. And also, do you guys, does CrossFit offer like curriculum for like a class? Like, I'm pretty good at making my own curriculum and I include a lot of the stuff that, that they actually teach in the level one. But it would be nice if they just had like something put together that I could 
use for my class? Yeah, that's a really good question too. There's no set curriculum, I think, specifically with what you're talking about right now. But um, shoot me an email or shoot me um, a DM. And uh, I, I know a uh -huh. handful of people who are running classes inside of schools at all kinds of, not all kinds of levels, different levels, whether it's like a yep. younger level, high school level and up. Um, and I could just at least try and put you guys in touch and resource that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's an easy one. Unless Kate has something in mind too. No, I don't really. Um, I was kind of thinking of like CrossFit Kids stuff, but um, what age are the people that you're teaching? I'm a high school, so it's hard to get these kids yeah. to do anything. Wait, I thought you said college. <laughs> I thought he said college. Story change. Story change. What do you no, What do I'm you a currently high teach them? Teacher <clears throat> and a college coach. Uh, we teach. I teach personal fitness and wellness. It's like a state required class. Do you do like CrossFit stuff already? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. But I don't have a lot of equipment, pretty minimum. Plus, kids just aren't the most engaged. <laughs> so on and so forth. So it's just nice to have like people to bounce ideas off of. Yeah, man, shoot me a DM. Um, like I said, I know a handful of people who are running those types of uh, classes at different age ranges too. So like I said, worst comes to worst, we'll put you in touch. Um, I'm sorry, I can't give you any specific knowledge. I've just, I've never run a class like that. So I don't just want to spend yeah, no worries. but yeah. I don't even know what your question was, but have them do death by burpees. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. I My favorite go-to is just 100 burpees for time, but most of the kids just cheat. Yeah, so death, just finished when everybody else is done. Death by burpees, death by burpees. And just keep <laughs> teaching them little things about the air squat. High school kids, whether they do it a lot or a little, they just need to like, they need little improvements on their air squat. Just tiny little things consistently. Yep. Yeah. It's a lifetime skill. You know, it really freaked me out. My, I have a little brother. He's like, well, this is when he was seven. He could not do an air squat. And like, I didn't live with him at the time and I did, couldn't do any training with them. But I was absolutely mortified by my brother who was pretty active, but just sat at a desk all day. And when he was home, sat in front of the TV or sat in front and played like PlayStation, whatever. And like, he was so inflexible for a kid. It was terrifying. Do you have that with your high school students? Are a lot of them just like not mobile people for young people? Oh, yeah, dev extremely unmobile. I spend actually tomorrow, I do like mobility Monday and I try to spend at least 30 minutes stretching, but they won't even buy into that. They're like, I don't need this. I'm 14 years old. I'm flexible already. <laughs> and they're just That's really good at being in the question mark shape. You're like, oh God. Oh yeah. They're great at that. David, can I say something to you? Sure. Share just a, a really superficial prejudice insight I have about you. Yeah. You sound more like a piano teacher. <laughs> I sound like a piano teacher? Yeah, more than a tennis coach. Huh? Let me hear you just say, let me hear you say the thing where you say, um, um, oh, someone donated a dollar. Let me hear Let me hear you say the thing like when all the balls are and you say, pick up, okay, pick up the balls or that, that line I always hear the coach say. I just say balls up. Oh, yeah, balls up. Okay, See, can you man, give that's me like a an, tennis coach. Let me just hear you say that a few times. Balls up. <laughs> Is that right? It was that a dirty joke? No, no, but actually, when you said it then, I was like getting a little aroused. <laughs> okay, guys, balls up. Yeah, I, yeah. Dude, yeah. You, that could transfer to working in a prison. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. thank All you, right. guy. I am funny. Bye. Bye. Pandora, Washington Post, and the BBC. Yes. So we learned a couple of things from the Pandora Papers after review that South Dakota, as we said, is a trust friendly state with minor restrictions, making it attractive domestically and globally for legitimate and illicit use. Now, the other thing we talked about last week was that you were saying how it's cool for people to take advantage of um, tax loopholes <laughs> just just to try and. Um, increase their wealth. And there's nothing wrong with that is basically what you said. I guess one of the issues with the Pandora papers is that what they realized was that a lot of the people taking advantage of these tax loopholes and using places in, like South Dakota in the US as a tax haven, were doing so because they're not able to do this inside of their countries. Um, and they were doing it, for example, the Jordanian mon monarch 
uh, mm-hmm. was trying to avoid displaying wealth more publicly in his country because it would antagonize his people and piss off Western donors who gave him money. So, for example, someone like that is using the U.S. to shelter and hide his income. Um, there was another. Is there anything like really bad in this article? Like, I don't think there's anything really bad. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything really bad. I just think it's interesting. I think it's good to know about this kind of stuff. Um, like, don't you expect the King of Jordan to own three offshore company, uh, three, uh, sorry, the beachfront mansions, uh, three beachfront, be- <laughs> don't you expect the King of Jordan to own three beachfront mansions in Malibu? I'm not like, I mean, he's the yes. King of fucking Jordan. As the King, he's a King. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I think the the internal commentary is that, you know, you worry about what you call like an average person, like, you know, following the laws and paying taxes where, you know, global elites. And this is a quote from the article, the global rich and political elites who have identified been identified the Pandora Papers who are able to use financial secrecy to hide their assets overseas to avoid paying taxes. I think that's a risky scenario. Every person, every time the government, so basically, all you people who want to raise taxes on the rich, just remember. Oh, you're gonna fucking love my next article. You have to remember this. There's no such thing as wasting money. Like all of that stuff is just idiot talk. It's just word trickery. If I buy thirty Lamborghinis, that makes all that money trickles down. All of that money goes to the people who made the tires, the keys, the paint for the Lamborghini, the mechanics. It doesn't even matter. I can throw the Lamborghinis in the ocean afterwards. It doesn't matter. Money's just constantly being circulated. The only thing you need to think about is who do you want spending your money so that it comes back to you quickly? Do you want it to be people who like you of varying degrees of wealth from homeless people to Bezos or do you want it to be elected officials in the government? That, but all basically every time you pay taxes, you're saying that you want someone in office to spend your money. And every time you buy something, you're saying you want someone else to spend your money, the person you gave that money to. You guys get it? It has like they, they paint this story like rich people are bad. They're not any that. Why the fuck are they bad? You're telling what? me a rich guy who has who builds a man uh, a 700 room mansion that he's never going to stay in is bad, even though it employed six thousand people. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think that rich people are bad. I think it bad people are bad, and if they are rich and bad, they can do a lot more damage. Then, then, then the government? No, Next that's article. not true. That's wait, wait, not wait, true. wait, wait, wait. Let me <laughs> Next article. Let me get here. That's not true at all. You ready? Go on. Yeah. Ultra wealthy spending and saving. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Mean, Before you go on, people uh, in Jordan were starving to death and the king was doing nothing to feed his people. So that was happening from what I understand. Yeah, fair enough. That sucks. That sucks. You mean like all these woke mayors and, and governors who fucking told their people to fucking lock down and wear masks? Denver, Austin, you fucking assholes, California's governor, and then you flew out of the fucking state. You went to Mexico and did a fucking press conference from, on, on Facebook from Mexico. That was like the 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 mayor of Denver, or the mayor of Austin did that shit. And then what? our fucking our fucking idiot fucking governor of California, Gavin Newsom, is at a fucking restaurant with fucking pharmaceutical lobbyists and fucking health lobbyists with no masks on. I mean, it's. All right, here we go. A Harvard study discovered that the top 1% of households in the U.S. currently have just as much influence as emerging market economies in fueling the debt of the bottom 90%. Here's what happens when the money sits in what is essentially financial storage rather than being spent on goods and services. Wait, wait, this, this what, what, is this, from, yeah, what's the original news source of this? I went and I went and looked at the Harvard uh, study article. So this okay. was a, this was and we an know at Har- and we know Harvard is completely untrustworthy and woke. Just so you know, <laughs> you're, you know reading, okay. you're, you're currently reading a book by a Harvard professor. It, it, but I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> but look at, look at the, the fucking godfather of fucking stem cell research. All th- was it, is at Harvard now? Well, not anymore. And all 30 of his papers that were, um, uh, peer reviewed were all retracted. Though that whole fucking anyway, go on, go on. <laughs> uh, 
Excuse me. So I was just kind of asking some questions. I don't, I don't give a- <laughs> <laughs> right. Fuck it, then moving on. No, no, I want to hear it. This is me really being defensive. I'm really upset. Good. I don't like no, rich people being is, attacked. This I'm not attacking rich people, but this was your claim last week that this whole trickle down theory of rich people spending money. I think there's. Oh, uh, it's not a theory. I think this is something it's people not should look into because I think there is more money that the wealthy are hoarding than actually putting back into the market. Um, anyway. Basically, when money is hoarding? saved in lo- hoarding, our government just printed five fucking trillion dollars. No one's hoarding shit. All right, go on. <laughs> Tell me, but I want to hear it. Unfuck. So basically, me. when a lot of money is saved, there's a big supply of money relative to demand. At a basic level, banks take the funds from saving accounts and lend them out to earn int- out to earn interest. With so much money available to loan out, banks heavily promote mortgages, credit cards, student loans, and other products that bring in interest income. But the upside of this is when there's a lot of money to loan, it also keeps interest rates low. Therefore, the costs of borrowing are small, and that gives people an incentive to borrow for what they want or need rather than save up for it. The problem, of course, is that the debt at some point has to be repaid. This makes it harder for households who are borrowing to save money. Debt is productive if it leads to benefit that create wealth. If a government borrows money for roads and bridges, here you go, Savant. Oh, fuck. (laughs) <laughs> answer the oh, go, go say it get it out <laughs> the government answer. borrows money for roads and bridges that makes it easier for people and goods to get from place to place if it borrows money to give tax cuts to people who are already wealthy then it isn't productive all right answer the phone uh did you see uh <laughs> not true not true and, and 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 that's making the presupposition that that's what the government's going to do with the money i i go hi james not you, James. You, James. Call her James. <laughs> That's actually my dad's name. This is not James. My oh. name is Alex. What's up, Savon? What's up, Alex? Hi. So I thought I would call because I have a great L1 story about my my L1 seminar. I did it uh, December 2019, so right before everything shut down. Thank God. Good timing. Did it in uh, Connecticut, so I'm from New Jersey. But long story short, uh, you brought up in a podcast earlier this week about the uh, the line from The Alchemist. I don't know if you remember it, but you uh, you mentioned about uh, the world conspiring to help you, right? And I thought, what a great line. That's I from The Alchemist? That wait, wait, wait. That's from The Alchemist? Yeah. Well, have you I not didn't, read that book? No, I have read the book, but I haven't read it like in 20 years. Uh, just to be clear, oh. someone told me one time, they go, dude, you live a charmed life. And then from there, and that really hit me. I was like, holy shit, I really do live a charm life. And then from there, I thought that I switched it to the world is conspiring to help me. I didn't realize that I stole that from the alchemist. I'm not, I'm not saying you stole it. But, but I probably I, did. But I probably did. I probably did. <laughs> I've never come up with anything original in my life. Go on. <laughs> Neither have I. But, uh, but I'm awesome I at stealing them. shit. Go on. <laughs> what I uh, just wanted to tell you guys about, and I just uh, – can't thank you all enough but uh and i'm talking about the l1 not used to bump but uh um the day that i passed that test the the sunday my uh grandfather had died and he was uh sick for a long time no doubt but it was undoubtedly a result of poor diet poor nutrition he uh had his leg amputated to come to i think it was gangrene but long story short it was uh you know, from that book, Alchemist, it was Maktub written. It was written that uh, that I would be getting that that uh, certification or pass that test the day that he passed. But uh, I just wanted to commend both of you guys, James and Kate. Keep doing what you're doing, fighting the good fight. But uh, Devon, I also really enjoy your work, so I just wanted to uh, come on and thank you all. Uh, thanks. What what was your granddad's name? Uh, William. He actually was out in uh, Discovery Bay. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Out in the valley. Yeah. And uh, is he first generation? What, American? No. No. And uh, are your parents still alive? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're in their 60s. They don't cross that or anything. Your mom's dad or your dad's dad? It was my mom's dad. That's weird, man. Did that hurt you? Were you close to him? No, actually. So living across the country, it was, 
you know, maybe once a year I'd go out and see him. So it was unfortunate that I never got to know him very well. We had uh, moved when I was a kid, but, uh, you know, stories through my mom got to know him a little bit better. But how's your mom? How'd she take it? I think she was actually relieved. When I say it was a long time coming, it was years of heart attacks and <laughs> insulin. And so it was, I think, more of a relief, if anything. And then my grandmother passed in Alzheimer's, and that was also undoubtedly a result of poor nutrition as well. I think they were also just coexisting together until one of them. Passed. How awesome is it that you're learning from those mistakes so you don't have to do that shit? How fucking cool is that? That's actually a really good point. I remember seeing a tweet from Russ Green about how society used to be so like dependent upon community and how that's almost like the reverse now because so many people are living and eating poorly, you know, that it's almost better to be, you know, in a smaller unit, like a CrossFit community, right. You know, where there's a lot more like-mindedness. Yeah. yeah. So when you mentioned Russ Green's name, my brain started racing because I actually haven't talked to Russ in years. And today I text Russ for the first fucking time. And I don't know how long I wouldn't say that we're enemies, but we both worked at CrossFit together and we had a very, very weird relationship. He's weird as fuck. He's weirder than me. And uh, but I text him today because he wrote this review of Woke Inc. And I started reading it and fuck Russ is smart. God, he damn, is that smart. motherfucker is smart. And uh and um, and I wanted to have him on the podcast. I wanted him to talk about the book, but he said he's too busy. Can you imagine someone turning me down? It breaks my heart. But, but he that said, to, but he said, but he said to bug him again later. So, yeah, he's a good dude. Man, I should write a book on CrossFit. Crazy shit. Do you remember Russ Hobart? Of course I do. Both I remember both of the Russells. I remember the Russells blog. We um, uh, is that still up online? Go through the. Some I think you can still. Icons? I think you can still find it because it existed outside of uh, CrossFit. Yeah. Who is that Go breathing? That is that me or Hobart or Kate? Who's it's who's keep, fucking it's Keep Fitness Legal now. Keep Fitness Legal CrossFit com. It's still there. Who's, oh, interesting. who's breathing? Is that you, Kate? Maybe. <sighs> that. <sighs> That oh it's Hobart okay it's fine it's Hobart. I've been I've been breathing way less than normal tonight. Hey hey the Russes were gnarly weren't they? Russell Berger and Russ Green. Holy shit! If you got on their bad side, would they f mm -hmm. fuck you up? Man, Berger would Berger did some crazy shit too. God damn, he was wild. Another smart. He's he's smart as fuck too. I want to um go back to what you said. The caller. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I just kind of like what you said about. The community thing, like having small bubbles that are people that do, that are, you know, striving towards similar things or living similar lifestyles. I almost feel like maybe that's what community was back in the day, you know, like small groups of people living together. They probably weren't massive communities in the sense of like you live in an entire town or an entire city. Like they probably were good when they were small and everybody was on the same page. But yeah, I, I really like what you said with regards to like, you know, when you have a community at CrossFit, everybody's, everybody's there for the same reason and everybody's, Everybody's like ready to suffer together and do good shit and do the hard stuff together. I, I just fucking, I love how you said that. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Well, again, that's what, that wasn't my own original idea. So like Savannah, I'm feeling. <laughs> do you, do you, you go to an affiliate? Yeah, actually I go to and coach at CrossFit Northtown. Oh New shit. Jersey, so oh James, shit. James, I think you know, Karyon and Bill as well. Yeah, oh, I really shit. do. Shit. Yeah. No, no, I really that's do. That's really cool. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah small world all right brother tell kariana and bill we said what's up not just me and james not kate kate doesn't know her <laughs> say hi though anyway <laughs> yeah sure i'll let him know <laughs> see you bye good see you later good night so what you're saying is is that rich people keep their fucking money it is, and it somehow affects interest rates, or that, or, or what, what the fuck were you Can saying? Can I answer that, something? Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, please. Yeah, dude. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I really want to try to understand this now that I'm calming down a little bit. No, I think I think what you said last week was absolutely right. I think the more money that can be put back into the market by spending, whether it's 
spending uh, essential goods or luxury expenses. I think that that's definitely a positive thing. And um, especially if it's being it's put back into the market in large quantities, for example, from the ultra wealthy. But I was curious to see if the ultra wealthy are saving more proportionally of their income than they are spending and putting it back into the market. I don't even know if that matters. I I, I I see why you would think that would be smart thinking, but I'm not sure if that matters. I think it matters. We're going to keep digging into this week, each week. So I used to make a shitload of money. And when I lost my job, the first thing I did is I got rid of one of my nannies and one of my gardeners. I switched from eating my feeding my dog all raw dog food to fucking 50-50 kibble. I didn't resubscribe to my Sirius XM. You know what I mean? Like I cut like just all the, just a bunch of shit but none of it affected me i still fucking no one would know and no no one from the outside could see that i live my life any differently you know so what, what i mean so what what you're saying is that Unless you, you stopped to, spending and it it hurt other people yeah it didn't affect me at all i made it so that i could still buy avocados organic avocados without looking at the price i made it so i could still buy gas even if it's 37 dollars a gallon without looking at the price of gas like i just fucking did things i, I in, in, in instead instead of um the 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 now you ha at Pete's Coffee if I buy a coffee there and the coffee's two dollars you better fucking make me feel like you want to fuck me if you want to get a tip really <laughs> so just some things change yeah before you could be a complete asshole to me you could be like you big nose fuck you cut in line I'll be like what oh you want a dollar here <laughs> you know now it's like you better smile at me and make me feel like like I'm 34 and sexy so I agree with you that I think the spending is better for the market and all people inside of the market where regardless of their current level of wealth. Yeah. My guess is that especially post pandemic, and I'm going to keep diving into this is that ultra wealthy or wealthier people are saving a proportionally larger amount of their income because of the social circumstances and economic client climate, and therefore not putting as much money back into the market. I think there's so much money being, pr I think it's insignificant. I think it's like, Oh, I don't. <laughs> okay all right i also can i can i comment on one of the comments because people want to know why i don't drink out of a nalgene or a yeti like a normal person <laughs> and where do i find such an oversized mason jar but the point was um i think drinking out of glass with water tastes better um i don't drink out of yetis because I, I don't like being like just like a bandwagon nerd and then um it's too woke. It, too woke. I don't think. Yep, exactly. Savan has one. <laughs> and then um, at the old, my old apartment where my wife and I lived, the uh, neighbors down the road, they had a huge greenhouse in their yard. And in, um, in the summer, they would grow dahlias. And it's my favorite, one of my favorite flowers. So they would put them out in large mason jars for sale. And we would buy them um, every week. They would put uh, another new dahlias out. So that's where it comes from. Product placement. I was, I, God, Yeti, please, please. I will fucking kick Hobart so far to the fucking curve if you sponsor us. I'll Just send I'll, me two, two Yeti, free Yeti cups and he's fucking gone. If you sponsor gone. Savan, I'll kick myself to the curb. <laughs> listen, um, listen, Bruce those Wayne, mason jars fucking suck. I We've had it. them in my house for three fucking years. And last week was the first time I told my wife, I don't fucking like those cups. And she goes, why? She says, I'm like, because you have a fucking I don't, tiny bladder and you can't drink water out of something <laughs> this big, man. I don't want ribbed for her pleasure on my lips. Why the fuck should a cup have fucking bumps around the fucking mouthpiece? What I want is just your regular pint glass that says like 49ers on it or like just those regular like pint glasses like you went at the, the, the fair mason jars yeah See, but they're not whoa. nostalgic i think whoa? mason jars are nostalgic right like there's something about it like you just heard the whole romantic story there's the dahlias there's the neighbor it's a there's a whole thing uh, to it at least there's one good listener on this podcast but here's the other thing that i'm gonna say you can drink water out of other glasses as well you know <laughs> I have some of those downstairs, but I, yeah. know, I know how these podcasts run. So I need the full three cups of water to get through this thing. I can't stand a mason jar. And my wife's like, wow, you're just telling me after two years, like, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying Do you to drink cool. out of bottles? Uh, no. What do you mean bottles? No, I just drink out of like glass, bottle pint glass. bottle has rib for Savan's pleasure on it. Mm, yeah, oh, that's I, true. See you, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see what you mean. Uh, I will do that like a sparkling water, like out of yeah. the glass bottles. Yeah, I do do that. 
How, uh, to, totally <laughs> different. Say how much, your mouth, how much of your mouth do you put on that? <laughs> hey, let me tell Would you. Would you do that whole thing in your mouth, yeah, Simone? Yes. The first yeah. time I saw my kids do that, like I, like I don't let anyone do that. But when I saw my kids do that, that was like one of the first things I taught my kids. Look, this is how you drink out of water. I had a roommate in college who fucking hit the bong like that. Oh. A whole mouth? <laughs> I just love that both of you guys had to demonstrate oh, that. Oh, my jaw cramp. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. You're way out of practice, Savon. What the hell? Damn it, that hurt. Dude, it was crazy. It was fucking crazy. I made this amazing bong out of a Corona bottle, and he used to put his mouth over it. I'm like, D and, and, and put in a few inches. It was, ugh. Gary Cohen. He's a cool dude, though. I just, enjoyed him. Just trying to get that vapor locked. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, that really hurt my jaw. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, because I didn't say anything about the rich spending stuff, and I feel like I should comment because I should, I should talk more. I, it, the whole thing with rich saving more, I think the thing is, is that the rich have always been, in a sense, frugal, and that's how they became rich. Yes or no, is that relevant? Like, I think that's something that is almost a personality trait of the rich. They're really fucking good with their money. And their spending is um, almost like the second part of it. The saving comes first. Yeah, I don't think that's wrong. Totally. I don't disagree <laughs> with that. I'll say that. I don't disagree with that. Yeah, fuck you, 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 don't, you don't stay rich by spending all your – dude, my jaw is fucked up. This muscle under my mouth. <laughs> like, um, the, yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on. We're going to keep digging at, into that, Savon. I like that topic a lot. Um, so, and I like well, how seeing you get all fired up. Let's invite, let's invite, let's invite an econ economist on the show. I would love that. A couple. Okay. <laughs> you mean like a boyfriend and girlfriend? Or yeah. A boyfriend and boyfriend? Yeah, like that like kind a, of couple? Yeah. A couple economist. I think this is the most callers we've ever had in a show. We're talking about good stuff here and we're only an hour in. Oh damn. I didn't look where this guy was calling from. Okay. Eric, what's up brother? Hey, what's going on? Do you agree with me, Kate Ho or Hobart? What's that? Do you agree with me, Kate or Hobart? You can't ask that question. <laughs> I got my finger on the hang-up button. <laughs> oh, dang. Well, I guess I have to agree with you then. Perfect. <laughs> you said, I guess I have to agree with you, which means you're fucking <laughs> wasn't on you. <laughs> woke. That's how the woke crowd works. I'm woke as fuck. Yeah, no kidding. Holy cow. Talk to me, brother. What's up? Hey, so I just want to say, a long-time listener, um, listening to you guys on my commute to work every day, and uh, just want to get your thoughts on the level one versus the online level one. I'm, I'm totally biased. I've never seen the online level one, but I'm totally biased. I, my opinion doesn't matter. I just, I'm glad you're asking about the level one. Well, no, I've been this question a ton. And that's why I asked because because you seem very very biased against the on level level one, um, which I did back in December of 2020, um, and I kind of had I was hesitant for the fact of how people might view that versus the in person level one. Oh, you did the online level one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> Tell us. And then yeah, so I did it, and then started coaching almost immediately while I was stationed in Japan. A racist. <laughs> Why? Because I was living in Japan. You're yeah, not you just racist. said Japan. Anything. Anything you say besides anything you say that points at ethnicity or culture is just racist. They're just racist. Um, Got you. So what did you think? Was it good? I mean, I, I, I thought it was good. I mean, obviously, I, so I haven't done the in-person one ever. Um, but I feel like really the only thing you're kind of missing out on is the, you know, the after class workout or end of day workout, um, you know, that, that kind of piece. But I feel like the information should be the same if, if it's not the same, you know? 
I don't even think they're fucking comparable. In the in the really? in, in, these guys can't say it. They're they <laughs> but they know I'm telling the truth. These guys can't. These knuckleheads can't say. It. Here's the reason why. In person, it's like someone talks to you for an hour and you stand up for an hour and you get your ass handed to you. And people who right. are really fucking good athletes will leave their sore and they won't even fucking know why. But they really know why because they've never had anyone hold them in a squat. They only did 20 squats in the breakout group, but they're just sore right. as fuck because they're just they're like these. Dave and Nicole train these fuckers to basically never see anything perfect. Like everyone can get better. Everyone can get better. And they're not allowed to say good to someone until the person really does do it good. Like fuck effort and, and, and and trophies for second place. (laughs) These guys fucking work you and they're so gentle and they're so manipulative and they're so smart and they're so like supportive as you go through that. And it's like, and you're not going to get that in the online thing. I don't think you're going to stand. You're not going to get James Hobart staring at your hips and the whole class staring at your hips. And you're like, Oh shit. I better not fucking let my butt wink. I mean, you're just, I just can't see you. You're not, there's no fucking way. So, so yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like me working out in my garage versus someone in an affiliate. I'm a bitch. Well, truth. But there's a the, the, so the difference is is like yeah you get the 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 information just like you would in the in the classes, um and then there's still a we did a a, a Zoom version or a, a a Zoom three hour session where you know my my level one instructor made us hold positions and he would call out positions and then and then like you guys are doing right now like highlight the person we want to key in on zoom up their video and they're like, Hey, everybody take a look at so-and-so and and how they're holding this position and and how they can fix that position. So I feel like it's the same thing that you would see in a regular class. The only difference being is you're not going to get any physical cues of like, Hey, when you're coming out of a deadlift, you should push your knees back and and, and an instructor can actually actually cut your kneecaps and push your knees back. I'm not touching it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go on this. No, I, I don't think Savon's totally wrong here. I think, honestly, I think the online level one, they've done a really awesome job in transferring. Um, Fired. Fired. I, <laughs> I can take it. Uh, I think they've done an amazing job in transferring um, all of the essential teaching components and learning components um, from the in-person right. level one. But I do, there is sort of, um, there's just a really beautiful uh, camaraderie and um, just in-person experience and being the in-person level one. So... Right. I, I, I don't know that's, if they do that's, this. That's, that's, I think, one of the harder things to carry over, right? Because there's just things lost in Zoom where you can't look left or right at the guy or so, girl sure. who's getting smashed next to you. So so let me ask you this then. It, it, as a level one instructor and, and and all that, like, would you guys look at those certifications differently than somebody that did the online or the, uh, the in-person version uh, of the course? In terms of the caliber of material and material being disseminated, no. I just, I think, like I said, I think there's a community and camaraderie and just, you know, maybe mm-hmm. some of the transfer of culture piece that you're just going to, you're going to have, it's going to be sure. more palpable at an in-person, but as far as the um, sure. transferring the material, no, I, th- I think uh, the online level one course is, uh, is awesome. And I think it accomplishes yeah. that. You, yeah, you just brought up something else. A, a huge thing of what CrossFit is, is it's culture. And that's what the L1 people did they, do. They, they disseminate desecrate they don't they disseminate they defecate they defecate <laughs> they, dis- <laughs> they disseminate the cultural information and that is fucking huge you don't even like you go there and after two days you don't even realize that they what the culture they transferred to you but they did mm-hmm. like all of a sudden like you want to cheer people on who work out it's like there's so there's no way that's transferred on the on in the in the in the online course there these uh, these coaches are so fucking cool you like that's you want to go there because you want to meet these four or five cats these fucking people are so awesome and they're so good to you and they're so approachable there is nothing pretentious about the l1 zero it's the opposite of pretentious except for your fucking the people who signed up for it and and these five people knock that out of all of you within the first day. And so the second day, it's like everyone in there you love. Like like the fucking old, disgusting person you never thought you'd talk to who signed up in the class next to you, and you're like, what the fuck is that person doing in here? These five instructors will teach you to love that person, love the way they move, and make you all realize that you're all doing the same thing. I mean, it 
There's no way you can get that in an online class. I don't know. I mean, I'd love to be proven wrong, but I don't think so. And another interesting thing, the fact you're stationed in Japan, is that's where the roots of really a lot of CrossFit L1s are. Greg did a lot of L1s there all by himself or just with Nicole and, 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 and just maybe take a few seals over there and do that shit. That where Are you in Okinawa? Where are you? So, uh, yeah, I was at the time, um, and they weren't offering any in-person level one, which is why I did the online version. Mm. De- Denny thing, said the L1 like, is spiritual. Yeah, it's fucking in, incredible, man. In New Zealand and Australia, we've had people that haven't been able to do their level one in person for multiple, like a couple of years. Like we did a level one in New Zealand right. and it was like they hadn't had a seminar in up to 12 months. Like people hadn't been able to get their level one. So the online course still facilitates people at least getting their level one and getting an introduction to the material and the content. And it also doesn't mean that you're never going to do the in-person level one. It's a stepping stone right. towards doing the in-person level one. It, you only have a three years. You have to go and do an, your L2 or do something. like. So it, I think it's like the introduction for someone who can at least get the level one material, get the certificate, start coaching, start implementing the information. And then in a couple of years' time, they go and do the in-person one and have that experience. And that just reignites that fire. Like I think the online level one has its place. And I think it serves a great group of people like us in Japan or Australia or New Zealand who have not been able to go to the level one in person. Um, I think it serves the community really well. Like Kate said, the online level one serves an incredible purpose, just like jacking off. But there's nothing <laughs> like there's nothing like sleeping with someone you love, fucking each other's brains out, going over the refrigerator into the kitchen naked, talking to each other, laughing, giggling, eating something you're naked, and 20 minutes later, fucking again. Like, and that's what the L1 is. And, and, and the online course, I'm guessing, is just jacking off. I don't know, though, but I told you from the beginning I'm biased <laughs> as shit. I'm just telling you. I just, I think that the L1 is incredible. Just, just, not the trainers don't have sex with you at the course. I just, no, no, no. I, I, I got to put metaphor. that out there. That's a metaphor. Okay, that's I'm just making similar. sure people got that. It's a metaphor. You know, it's a that's going to get clipped. <laughs> No, it's and... the L1 is making babies. Oh, how about your L1s are going to sell out in a second if Savan keeps talking? <laughs> I told you know I, I asked my so mom I'm working why. in Memphis and then I'm working in Boston and then uh... <laughs> I asked my mom why. I go, "Mom, why did you have kids?" And she said, "Because you my your dad and I wanted to make a love child." It's pretty cool, right? Nice. Yeah, my parents are divorced now. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks for calling in. Hey, the yeah, online course is great. I guess that's what we Thank come you, up man. with. Yep. <laughs> God, right. I hope my mom doesn't listen to that. But my mom really did tell me that they wanted to make a love child. Were your parents hippies? No, 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 no. But but they in the Bay Area. My my parents were a bit. My mom was uh my dad's a f- hardcore just immigrant, Middle Eastern immigrant. You know, you just come over here and work, and stay alive. What did he do? Don't what get killed. Is, what was liquor, job? liquor store, liquor store, liquor store. What do all Middle oh. Eastern dudes do? Liquor store. Mm. That's weird. That's weird. Your dad's Middle Eastern. He owned a liquor store. That's weird. Is that racist? That's weird. <laughs> Fuck. Do they do that in your country too? The, the Middle Eastern guys open liquor stores and then send their kids to Harvard. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I feel like we have a. I I don't really know if I want to go into this topic. I feel like I'm going to say something really awful. <laughs> No, it's okay. You can be racist and prejudiced like that. It's okay. All the gardeners in California are Mexican. It's okay. And they're um, all fucking but, working their ass off. And, and it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's the truth. I, it's like, I think we like probably have a, a slightly different um, population where we have a really large Asian population and Indian population. So I think it might just be a little bit different in terms of the type of Who are of your gardeners? Who does the gardening? Who's embraced the outdoor lifestyle of nurturing grasses and lawns and pruning trees? Um, honestly, probably a lot of Australians, but um, I don't know. I, I don't have a gardener, so I I, I can't comment. <laughs> you don't see the dudes driving around the pickup trucks with the lawnmowers in the back. You don't see what ethnicity. Yeah, they but are? a lot of those guys are Aussie tradies. Remember, yeah. I introduced you to tradies. tradies. Like a lot of them are like yeah. Aussies that just like young guys that do the lawn mowing and Jim's mowing. That's the company that's like around here. So, Jim. Not in my neighborhood, not in California. In California, <laughs> it's uh, Javier's Javier's gardening, and they're great. Uh, Hobart's DMs are going to go wild tonight after that, Sevon. <laughs> if that's the L1, I'm signing up. Wow, I didn't mean to say that. That it, it's not. It was a simile. It was a simile. 
<laughs> it's nothing like sex. <laughs> nothing like sex. It's an allegory. Yes. <laughs> At Sevon Rinsta. That's my new account. Hey, did you guys change your names or did um, Sousa do that for you? I think Sousa did it. I think Sousa did that. Good job making them lowercase and me capitalized. Good job. Yeah, I did notice that. I thought, Savan, maybe you'd done that. <laughs> hey, and look, and we're getting all moved around. Kate was in the center. Now Hobart's in the center. No, and now I'm bad. in the center. <laughs> I was about to say it's the best looking, but. <sighs> Let's be real. The only reason to go to the L1 is to check out the hot CrossFit chicks. Can't do that on the online course. Not true, but all that's <laughs> just a bonus. Okay. Hobart, the news. This was a story I wanted to bring up last week about empathy. This came out of a, a Forbes article discussing that empathy is the most important leadership skill according to research. Empathy is defined as the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. The reason empathy, empathy is so necessary is that people are experiencing multiple kinds of stress and data suggests it is affected by the pandemic and the ways our lives and our work have been turned upside down. When it comes to mental health, a global study done by a company called Qualtrics found 42% of people have experienced a decline in mental health. Specifically, 60% of people are experiencing increases in stress, while 57% have increased anxiety and 54% are emotionally exhausted. 53% of people are sad, 50% are irritable. 28% are having trouble concentrating. 20% are taking longer to finish tasks. 15% are having trouble thinking. <laughs> and 12% are challenged to juggle their responsibility. When it comes to work life, when people felt their leaders were more empathetic, 86% reported they are able to navigate the demands of their work and life successfully juggling their personal, family, and work obligations. This is compared with the 60% of those who perceived less empathy. Leaders can demonstrate empathy in two ways. First, they can consider someone else's thoughts through cognitive empathy. For example, if I were in his or her position, what would I be thinking right now? How would I be feeling? Leaders can also focus on a person's feelings using emotional empathy. Being in his or her position would make me feel fill in the blank. So be more I, I have a big empathy. problem with empathy. I can't Go ahead. wait. Go ahead, Kate. Go ahead, Kate. I was just wondering how they study empathy. Like they were talking about leaders that use more empathy versus leaders that don't. I'm just curious to know, like, what are the things that they, how, how do they measure that? You know, is it just like a personality thing where they're like, oh, that person's empathetic and this guy's an asshole. Judging these guys, from this. These people seem to be happier. No, without, without taking the specific um, poll or quiz or test that this, these participants went through, it just probably is something to the extent of, do you perceive your boss or so-and-so to be empathetic? What mm. things are they doing that um, would cause you to say they are acting empathetic toward you or they have empathy? That's kind of what this this sort of survey was in that realm. Yeah. I, I don't know I, if they I, qualified empathy. Kate, listen to this. Kate, listen to this. So, sorry, call, caller. Hold on one second. Kate, listen to this. This is the second definition of empathy in the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, and this is the root of the problem. And this is goes back to the woke conversation we're having. The imaginative projection of a subjective state into an object so that the object appears to be infused with it. Oh, fuck that definition. Never mind. Anyway, I, I, I think the big problem with empathy today is that we acknowledge each other's shortcomings. Some, someone let, let me let me let me explain what what really high emotional IQ is really high emotional IQ is is someone says to you hey I have breast cancer really low emotional IQ is oh my god I'm Paul keep that child under control Paul in the middle of something heavy here keep that child under control mute your ass boy now this so a, a, a really low emotional IQ is is when you say um Oh shit! I can't do this for the kid. Paul, what? <laughs> what? What? What are you breastfeeding, Paul? Paul, are you gonna talk? Call her. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, 
What are you doing? You breastfeeding? Why do we hear a baby during this? Oh, I'm explaining to people what emotion something is. No, my, emotional my son's just a little have wild. Have some that's all. empathy, Savan. Have some damn empathy. Boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, Savan. yeah damn exactly. Empathy, that's Savan. perfect, Kate. That is perfect. Do you see that? So someone who with fucking low emotional IQ would have been like, oh, how sweet. They would have they would have let Paul's behavior with his son being there while he's calling to the super high rated show. I mean, like, oh, how sweet, Paul. You have a child with you. <laughs> Tell us, Paul, how is your shut the fuck up? Just be real. Someone tells you they have cancer. It's not like, oh my God, I feel so sorry for and like and like and, and like nourish their nourish their depression and their sadness and project onto them that something's wrong. Holy shit, you have cancer? What kind of cancer? What happened? Oh shit. Like just keep it real. Like don't 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 project onto them your don't bring your emotional baggage or the fact that you're bummed that they have cancer or your friend's going to die. Don't bring your selfish perspective to it. It's all it's all 99% of the time when people think they're being empathetic, they're being selfish. A truly a tr true empathy would be fucking enlightenment. I'm going to say something super woke right now, but have you heard of the term toxic positivity? What? No, but, toxic I, but I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's that I person that, that yeah, responds that shit's to something like just oh, super happy, happy and fake and like superficial and yes, like always happy too. and positive about everything. And it's kind of fake and it's, it just comes off as like a, yeah, just artificial. And it's actually not nice. It's like someone who's like, uh, yes. like kind of an enabler to a degree or someone who says shit that it doesn't actually make you feel better. It just makes them feel better. It's, it, it, you know, it's the opposite. So there's this, there's the two sides to it. When a child falls down, there's the parents who are like, Hey, whatever you do, don't ask the child. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And I agree with that. But then there's the other parents who are like, get up. You're fine. <laughs> Get up. You're totally fine. The kid's fucking bleeding from his knee and falling down. It's like, dude, just do dude, don't do either of those. Shut the fuck up and treat someone how you would want to be treated if you fell down. Someone just kind of just to, just to be there with you. Like they don't like. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with empathy. That's the whole the whole woke thing. Oh, my God. You told Danielle Brandon her her shirt is too big. You sexist ass. And they feel people feel like they have to come to arrest you. They're empathizing with how she might have felt with, about me saying that. That's Shut a, the fuck my, up. Us cool motherfuckers like being trolled. Do you understand that? Uh, do you want to know if you're me, cool, the cool please test? Troll me. <laughs> if you if you don't like being trolled, it's because you're an insecure, miserable curmudgeon. If you like being trolled, you're cool as shit. <laughs> we take in all energy and and we're fucking alchemists. Paul, how are you today, buddy? Sorry, you called. <laughs> I wanted to answer, but you called it a crazy time. <laughs> Oh, Paul. It, it's all good. Paul. I called it at the exact right time. How old's your son? He is 14 months old. He actually, uh, he did a front flip off the, off the bed the other night. And uh, <laughs> because of you and your podcast, I didn't react. And he turned out to be just fine. So. Oh, it's funny. I was about to say he didn't do a fucking front flip at 14 months but I, but i feel you he did a front flip at 14 months I feel you. yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah, you're a good did. dude you're a good yeah. dude uh hobart hobart's gonna totally have the biggest like his kids are gonna be so soft he is helicopter hobart's, parent absolutely yes yes you're you're <laughs> gonna be will, an amazing their grandparent never, their feet will never touch the ground you're gonna be an amazing <laughs> grandparent no fuck that man i had a, i had a i had a great mother, grow up to be great liberal, mother huh? so i have a good i have a good <clears> template I have a good template, man. That's true. That's true. Who also told I'm sure me the war, the, they'll wear masks too. So, oh, <laughs> good one. <laughs> got jokes. The new guys got jokes. <laughs> Paul, how are you? What's Devon, up? On uh, on on the empathy note, um, so I'm I'm in, I'm in the Marine Corps, and I actually had a Marine. Um, she uh, she was having a really rough time, and. Um, over at the previous company she was in mm -hmm. and uh, she came over to our company and she had this like mental breakdown and all that. And uh, all I did was sit her down and figure out what the problem was. And it was, she was like, you know, Hey, you know, they're treating me like I'm just a tool. Like I'm not a person. And all I did was give her like something to do. And if I didn't have that moment of empathy with her, like she, she would have been completely destroyed. And, uh, a few months later, she got meritoriously promoted, got a lot of recognition from our chain of command. And I mean, empathy goes a long way in terms of leadership. So like just it, to come back to like what we originally started talking about. But, but is that empathy or just believing in someone? Because I believe in people. I think that's a good I think that's a that's a healthy example of empathy right there. 
Oh, Jesus. He didn't even say anything. Like, what? Well, okay, tell me what he said, Hobart. That was empathy. He yeah, listened but what to he her, didn't say. Yeah, to what her, he, he listened to what her. What he her, didn't say was, hey, let me make you feel better, right? Exactly. Exactly. As my mom would say, he didn't sit her down and try to be her emotional custodian. Well, then, gave oh, her a oh, that's good. That's what my mom would say. She said, don't. She said, she said, she said to me once, I'm not your emotional Go. custodian. Fuck. Yeah, that's that's awesome. real I'm shit. using that. But here's the thing. I feel like I don't listening think that Paul... is listening oh, is okay. empathy, right? Listening is empathy. And like just hearing someone out. Because I think the worst thing is to go back and be like, let me try and make you feel better. Let me say all these things that aren't necessarily a reality. Let me tell you it's going to be okay when we don't fucking know if it's going to be okay, right? Like that empathy is being like, I don't know. Tell me what you've got going on and, and I'll just hear you out. Listening is not yeah. enough if your woman's no, menstruation. If you're the week before your woman's menstruation so comes. What? She had to work for that promotion, though, Savon. It wasn't like, oh, hey, here's this fucking, you know, cupcake. Hope you feel better. I'm like, not suggesting that uh, at like, all, by the way. Yeah. What I'm suggesting yeah. is, is that listening and empathy are two separate things. Yes, John Brzezink's coming on the show tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I'm getting chubbing up on it. Um, <laughs> Pacific Standard Time. I don't think listening is empathy. You guys think listening is empathy? It's 100% an empathetic trait, yeah. Because you can't, okay, you can't empathetic start, you can't trait, start to, I agree with that. Listening and understanding together. And you can't start to understand someone until, um, as another good friend of mine said, you need to listen to understand, not to respond. You can't start to understand somebody or how they're feeling until you listen to them. I, I, I don't I don't think I'm agreeing with you guys on that, but I will say this. What you said about emotional custodian, yeah, like or, or emotional docent. like whether, Oh, that's what, nice too, yeah. Either way you want oh, – I give your mom credit for all yeah, that. You should. That, um, <laughs> That's what I mean by having a low emotional IQ, like thinking that you're going to give someone something emotionally um, that, that's what you want to give them based on what they said. That's not empathy. That's like so in, that's being a codependent. So in terms of like em empathy and leadership, it's having the ability to understand them and then giving them like the way forward based on your understanding of them in order for them to overcome it. Like you don't do it for them. Like yeah. you just guide them in the correct way and nurture them the right way. Um, when, when we were at the top of the stadium one year, it was the, one of the final workouts and the men were entering the stadium in Carson and Josh needed to do really well at this workout. And I was friends with Josh, but I'm just a fucking cameraman up there. And as he ran by me, I'm like, God, I want to say something to try to help motivate him. And as he ran by me, I go, Hey Josh. And he looked at me, I go, don't be a cunt out there. <laughs> and he took last place. <laughs> Oh, fuck <laughs> hated myself hated myself even though i'm sure i had nothing to do with it hated myself <laughs> so yeah well well i like your story and i like military guys talking about leadership I, I i know so little about leadership and it was such that was the hardest thing about working when i was promoted at crossfit from going from being a creator to a leadership position it's a really crazy transition but i had amazing leaders around me and they were all from the military and I and I and I and I pride myself on being a good listener. But this word empathy, I mean, I think like when I think of empathy, I think of like staring into someone's soul and giving up myself for them, being a perfect sort of like empty mirror for them. Yeah, in terms of leadership and empathy, I highly recommend listening to Simon Sinek and his talks. Um, if you're ever interested in that, that's kind of who I've read the most on this, on, on this particular subject. S I N E K. Uh, Simon and then Sinek S I N E K. Yes. Got it. Have you read his latest book? It's something about like the infinite mindset. Yeah. The infinite game. Yeah. Infinite you're, game. You're I really want to read it. Playing the game. Yeah. It's really good. One of the, I briefed a commanding general the other day and she specifically mentioned the book before we even started. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, he, he did like, an she's, interview she's on the right level. Yeah, yeah, he did an interview with Brene Brown, and she's an excellent interviewer. Like, it was a podcast on her, uh, on her show on Spotify or something, and it was it was so good. Like, just the way he talks about it, it was – I feel like it was relevant to, you know, everything in life, but it was something that with competing and training, I was like, I really like this. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. What What's the gist yeah. of it? Um, so, essentially, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this, but – he basically talks about like a scarcity mindset versus an infinite mindset mindset. So, um, Carla, can you, do you have a, do you have like a, a elevator pitch version of it? Um, so basically the infinite game is, uh, so 
a company may be hoping to win, you know, this quarter. Whereas like a company like Apple is like, Hey, we're selling like something that is an overarching ideal that is going to make someone a customer for life. Um, so they're playing to continue to play the game. Whereas like other companies are playing for short term wins. Yeah. They almost become like, they almost disable themselves by having goals because they're too short sighted. Right. Yeah. So they get lost playing the game rather than like making their own whole game. Does this, does this build off of um, that, that old popular Ted talk of his where he talks about, you know, you're selling rather rather than selling the what, sell the why. Yeah. Does he do case studies like like he does in that book? Like he uses companies as examples for what he's writing about. Yes. No. Yeah. yeah, It does kind of build off of the, uh, off of his first book, but it's, it, it kind of does take the original book to like the next level. Um, it, it's kind of like you're in, in the finite game, you're fighting for survival, like in this moment, whereas in the infinite game, like mm-hmm. you're fighting to be like a long-term player in a certain arena, like, like the game that you are playing, like has no end. Whereas everyone else, like they're playing like maybe like, you know, four quarters of football, but you're playing forever. I went pee. I, I can't help. <laughs> <laughs> On a less serious note, Savon, those Vico shoes, I just ordered some because of you. So the core ones. Have you ever done have you ever done um MDMA? No, but when I get out I <laughs> highly intend to. Um MDMA is f- M- MD- MDMA is fascinating. Make sure you do it with the right person. It is fascinating. Try not to do it in a party atmosphere. I have a friend is, who did yeah. um, MDMA therapy. That yeah, it, oh that's cool. It. Yeah, he really, it, really, really enjoyed it. Dude, it's fascinating. So, they made it Siobhan illegal went. because there too many therapists were fucking their clients on it. But Savon, when are you and Ricky going to start your Rad 140 cycle together? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do the enlarge. I can't get an enlarged prostate. I already had to stick his finger in my butt like five years ago. I don't <laughs> want it. And, and, Just I don't, don't that. think about it, and it won't happen. That's fine. Oh, mind over matter. I will not yeah. get enlarged yeah. prostate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just take it. Then Send maybe it. I don't even need to take that stuff. I can just do mind over matter and just get buff. Yeah, high test, high test all day. Roland <laughs> Sapala, this show runs pretty late on the East Coast of the USA. Good night. Thanks for the amazing show. Thanks, Roland. No problem. Roland, um, Kate's like way, way on the East Coast. <laughs> in the future. Yeah, in the future. All right, brother. Thanks for calling in, um, Paul. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Congrats on the kid. We rolling? Yeah, you guys would piss me off. You guys are pissing me off tonight. (laughs) Good. (laughs) A Florida man exonerated of a 1983 rape and murder after 37 years in prison. He's suing uh, over his wrongful conviction and the initial sentence to death in which a disproven bite mark was crucial evidence. Robert Dubois, 56, was freed in August last year after long-shelved, untested, untested, untested DNA evidence from a rape kit proved he was innocent of the rape and murder of a 19-year-old um, girl, Barbara Grams, in Tampa, Florida. The only physical evidence implicating him was fabricated fabricated bite mark evidence that supposedly matched to an injury supposedly matched to an injury on the victim's body. In fact, the victim's injury was not a human bite mark at all said an attorney for the human rights defense center who wrote this lawsuit. The lawsuit contends that investigators conspired with jailhouse informants to falsely implicate Dubois Du Bois, and were guilty of misconduct. He never confessed and maintained his innocence throughout, said his lawyers. Convicted of the murder and sentenced to death, his sentence was reduced in 1988 to life in prison until his exoneration and release last year. His innocence was proven after review of the case by the Hillsborough County State Attorney's Office and the Innocence Project, which works nationwide. That's pretty hectic. He went to jail when he was like 19, right? And he's 56 and just got out? Yeah. Fuck. I struggle with that word. Fuck? No. Exonerated. It's those, nope. It's uh, one of my it's it, I just don't like that word. 
right? Word. Yeah, that one. The R word. Yeah. It's tough on me. It's tough on me. When when going back to empathy, when when that guy said his grandfather died, like I felt something. Yeah, man. Is that, is that mm -hmm. empathy? Is that sympathy, maybe? And when I hear that R word, man, it just rocks me. Uh, do you think he did it? Is he guilty? What kind of animal was the bite? It wasn't, more a, than, it, it wasn't actually a bite. I think that was the issue. Should he get more than $1.85 million? I don't know. I don't know. How like, do what's, a, what's enough to kickstart your life and keep it going for a little while when you're 57 years old coming out of prison? Dude, are they, are they it arguing like what tax is lost? Free. It better be tax free. That's all I got to say. It's a great example where that shit should be tax free. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You'd be pissed, right? You'd be really pissed. You'd be angry for the whole 37 years. I would have to become the only way it, it's, it's like being, he was raped. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to make light of this because I just struggle with the issue, but I would rather be raped than spend 37 years in prison if I had to choose one or the other. And, uh, it's just fucking either way. It's horrible. That by the way, that's why you can't have the death penalty. Can't have the death penalty for two reasons because th there's mistakes, whether they're on per malicious or not. And two, if you kill people, you're also creating murderers. The person can't just die on their own. And those are two things we don't want to do. We never want to kill someone who's innocent. Like the 15 year old boy who died a couple of days ago from taking the vaccine. And we never want to uh, make murderers. if We can avoid it. Two things we we don't want to do. It's not it's not good for us. Why'd How many states way? in the U.S. still have the death penalty? That's a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. Is it sure. quite a few, or is it like the odd one or I don't two here and I, there? Well, I don't think it's I don't think it's a majority. Mm. How would you go to sleep at night if you know that you c convicted to someone to life in prison without like <sighs> that that you believe that they one hundred percent did it that what you did was right? Oh well, that that's okay. I mean, I could I could probably justify that, but like, I, <sighs> but that's the thing. Everybody thinks they're right. You know, whether you're the good guy or the bad guy, like everybody believes that they're right. It, it, it's the whole thing. It's like that's how you get criminals. It's like they think they're doing what's right for them. It might not be what's right in our eyes, but it's, you know, it's what they believe is right for them. Oh, that's more than I thought. Wow. 24 states with death penalty. Jeez. Governor imposed moratorium. The purple states, you can't do it because the governor's put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what's crazy about this. I know this is really going to upset people. But in the last 10 years, there's been 40 million abortions in the United States or something crazy like that. Or since, or, or wait, no, no. Maybe it was since abortions were made legal, 1979. But think about that, for 40 million dead babies. Imagine a pile of dead babies that's 40 million big. And don't anyone jump to conclusions like I'm pro-life. I'm pro -life. Just because I can go there doesn't mean I'm pro-life. Don't be stupid. But just imagine a pile of 40 million babies, dead babies. <laughs> taller I, don't than know, I don't know. I don't know if tall, it would be a pile of babies. Taller than Mount Everest. Yeah, I was going to okay. say that too. That It'd be a pile of little fucking zygotes? pieces of cells. Just little like blobs. Okay, let's say 10 million. <laughs> That'd be pretty million, small. 10 million dead babies. Do you want me to pull us out of this? Please. Mm -hmm. Okay. In a, in a scene from the new Venom 2. Oh, that's what your mom said. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, no, she didn't because I'm here. Um, okay. In the scene from Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, Eddie Brock and Venom have fled to the top of San Francisco's iconic Coit Tower. Helicopters are seen in the background scouring the city, and Venom and Eddie mention the police pursuit. So it is assumed the helicopters are searching for them. The helicopters, however, were part of the forthcoming Matrix film, which was also being filmed in San Francisco at the same time as Venom 2. The Matrix 4 paid the San Francisco Police Department $420,000 over 21 days of shooting to help manage the public during their stunts. 
Comparatively, Venom 2 only paid $192,000. It seems that Venom 2 Let There Be Carnage made the best of a tricky situation and saved some serious cash along the way. There you go. Pulled us out of it. So I didn't there know were movies, two movies I didn't being... know two movies shot in the same city at the same time. That's kind of cool. And, and 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 because because they overlapped on needing security, Venom piggybacked on the security that the Matrix Four was getting from the I think city, it or like on it. And then because of some things that they were shooting, it caught some of the things that Matrix Four had in their shots, like helicopters and maybe some other, uh, not special effects, but other um, what's what I'm looking for, like events or. Hey, has anyone seen that movie, Venom? Eric Yu is saying he saw Venom 2 today, and it's good. What, what about the new Bond film? Are these good movies? I heard the Bond film was good. I want to see both of them. Uh, did you see Venom 1? I just I really like Tom Hardy. Yeah, I saw I, And I know Venom. that's probably why you guys like it, too. Is yeah, I, like Tom, I like Tom Hardy. Yeah, He's amazing. I love him. Have Can you I see him? Have you seen Peaky Blinders? Yeah. No, everyone he's, keeps telling me to his see him. So his character in that, that show is he's, absolutely excellent. Okay. He's such Alfie? a psychopath. Al Alfie, is that his name? What yeah, it might be Alfie. Name? Alfie? Fuck. Yeah. It's something it's something like something like that. That's just it's a messed up name for a messed up guy. Yeah, he's excellent. That's a I think you might like that show, Savon. I don't know. Hey, there he is. Do you guys hear that noise? <laughs> no. That's like the craziest. That I have all my windows shut. Oh my God. What is going on? All right. Next story. Okay. When is Tom Hardy handsome? I missed him. I think he's handsome. He's very handsome. He's very handsome. Who are you calling? <laughs> my wife. Hello. Hi, babe. Do you hear that? Yeah. What the fuck's going on? You're on layer live on the air. Be cool. <sighs> Um, I'm guessing it's fireworks. I'm hoping. That was fucking nuts. Where? Uh, that yeah. was nuts. Wait, did it just stop? Yeah. Okay. Okay, if you get scared, bring the whole family into my office. I definitely will. Thank okay. you. Okay, love you, bye. Bye. Shit. Okay. My wife will never be on the podcast more than that. Tell her I say hi. Thank you. Obert <laughs> says hi. <laughs> when asked... <laughs> how he would prepare for the October 12th mission with Jeff Bezos space travel company. The 90 year old star Trek actor, William Shatner joked that he had some apple pie the previous night. Shatner says that they called him and he says, I'm going to see the vastness of space and the extraordinary miracle of our earth and how fragile it is compared to the forces at work in the universe. That's really what I'm looking for. Shatner goes on to say that what's his name wants to colonize Mars. That's ridiculous. In speaking of Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, Shatner goes on to say that it takes a year and a half to get to Mars. People will think it's like they're on a trip on a cruise line. No, man, you are in zero gravity and it's hotter than hell and the air is putrid. Help me, I'm dying, but I'm dying slowly. What a terrible fate, Shatner says. Recently, he also said he is now terrified to go into space and sometimes he's not terrified. Kirk out. I'm getting him on the podcast. William Shatner, he's 90. Oh, oh he's 90, man. Get him on the podcast. You yeah, think you William can? Sh Shatner. Oh, fuck. Dude, I had Volkanovsky on. I can do anything. You think you can get the Shat? Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> hey, William Shatner should play Donald Trump in a movie. Well, that's good because my next story is about Donald Trump. Okay. Nice. Nice transition. Trump and Mitch McConnell. Trump was saying that Mitch holy Mc shit, Mitch McConnell. He is the emperor. How does Palpatine anyone is he, of how is he politics. even real? How is he even a real person? Like, have you ever uh, talked in his mouth? Doesn't uh, move. Uh, yeah, man, uh, he's in desperate he's need. Talk about someone who needs a level one. That fucking guy. <laughs> yes. What is going on with him? I can't even believe that's a real human. I don't mean that in a derogatory way either. I just just can't believe. I mean, I if can't you can't do ten sound air squats in sixty seconds, you shouldn't be allowed to be. Uh, congressman or woman or a senator how many to be president of the united states you got to be able to back squat your body weight below parallel <laughs> stand that fucking shit up what about what if you're in a wheelchair shoulder press uh, shoulder press you gotta be able to do 15, 15 strict pull-ups i'm broken oh yeah yeah i like it. can this just speak for fucking anyone in any job <laughs> mm, mm. racist <laughs> kate's being racist <laughs> racist donald just to enter society 
Hey, the same amount of pull-ups for men and women? Yes. Yeah. Damn, Hobart, you didn't miss a beat. Sexist, sexist. Uh, yeah, sure. 15 okay. not a not a high number. Like, I don't know. My wife just texted me and she said I can do the podcast in the house if I get scared in my office. She's so cool. <laughs> Are you scared? No. Maybe. I don't want to talk about sure you're it. Safe, man. If I was, would you empathize with me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there is a hesitation. Kate, Kate, would you send Greg over to protect me? <laughs> we're not allowed out. He couldn't help you. Oh, he can't come <laughs> we're not, there's no way we're getting there. <laughs> can you please come and help us? Fuck. I'm scared. I don't like this place. Can I come to your office? <laughs> Dude, it was so sad. That, that video I saw today about Australia. I really hope that's a gross exaggeration. No, they're doing it in Victoria as well. It just started today. What's going on? Oh. Fill me in. So oh, we so have QR sad. codes to check in everywhere. And now what they've done is they've hooked up the QR codes to an app where when you check in a little like your account with um, our, our government like accounts will open up with uh, whether we're vaccinated or not with a little green screen. And that's how we're going to be led in places when we reopen. So New South Wales is reopened from today. We have got another three, four weeks maybe. It's meant to be the end of the month, but fucking who knows? It's crazy. Dude, it's, I don't know how it's I feel cra- about that. Dude, it's crazy tracking. Mm. It's crazy. And we still tracking. have a curfew. Like we've got 50% double vax. We're on the way to 80% because 80% more than 80% have had their first dose. But we still have a curfew. We're not allowed to leave the house from 9 till 5 a.m. We have a 10K radius, like nothing, no businesses are open. It's like it's absolutely wild at this point. So let's say it's all true. Let's say, let's say everything about COVID is true. Savan, bear with me. Is any country talking about walking back some of these these measures, these tracking measures, these the you know supposed prophylactic um, prevention measures? Is any country talking about walking them back once X you know vaccination is hit, or talking about walking them back once you see a prevalent or not prevalence, but a, a drop in the yeah prevalence of COVID in the population? Like, is anyone talking about this? Like at Australia, like, hey guys, here's the good news when. Only one percent of the population has COVID. We're gonna not. We're gonna delete this app from your phones. We're gonna scrap all this data, and we're not gonna make you do this anymore. It's not the conversation in Australia. They have barely that even managed to put roadmaps roadmaps out. But countries like Denmark and like what's another one? They've dropped all of their Norway, Croatia. But listen, yeah, what he's saying, Kate, he's have. saying something really, really fucking fascinating that I haven't even heard anyone ask this question, let alone the answer to it. Be yes. He's saying your country, Australia, is implementing the fact that you need a vaccine to get into certain places. He's saying, what if, what if, let's say, just COVID goes away? It's gone forever. Do you get rid of the vaccine passports or do you still have to use them? And, and, and James knows the answer to this and you know the answer to this. They don't go away. They're going to add another shot on there. It's going to be the flu shot. It's going to be like... Is your is your does your anus self lubricate shot like it's gonna be just get crazy? It is gonna be fucking nuts. You cannot go down this road. And hey, mm-hmm. even if everything was true, here's what's really crazy. And Kate, Kate talked about this on the last show. They haven't had COVID there yet. They've had like a thousand yeah. or ten thousand cases. We literally just yeah. hit a thousand. Like they haven't the had other it day. yet. What's gonna happen when it when it hits there? Like it hit like my town. Those people are going to lo- come unfucking hinge. They're going to nuke themselves. Do you guys have a nuke? Does Australia have a nuke? <laughs> you should nuke yourselves. Just shoot one straight up and let it just come right back down. Oh, I my think- God. Do the rules apply to the Aborigines? Fuck no. Because black lives don't matter. They don't give a fuck about those people. They don't have any money to care about them. And by care about them, I don't mean like the traditional use of care, like where like you're nice to someone and you help someone up off the street. I mean, they don't care about them like they can't be milked for money. I guarantee you, right, Kate? They don't have any rules. Oh, they're probably terrified, though. Probably type 2 diabetes runs rampant there. because I mean, that's the thing. Everybody is terrified, though. That's yeah. like that's the problem with not actually having it around and not actually seeing like what happens when everybody does get COVID because it's like everybody is just in this state of panic and fear because it, we're just looking at other places being fucked and like the media is feeding us. And like, you know, I am, I am a little biased and like, you know, I like to look at the stuff that makes sense to me, but, um, 
the the stuff that I've had to have conversations about with my parents, I'm like, you guys keep on looking at the mainstream media that are telling you all the scariest shit about COVID and, and you're not getting the full picture. Like you just don't, it's impossible when and you even, don't see it. And it's even not, the people like who are, even the people who are badasses like me, who are like, fuck that. I ain't afraid of nothing. I'll do anything. I'll drink a gallon of COVID. The second they get it, man, they've been brain. They don't realize how much they've been brainwashed. They get scared as shit. They go through like a little bit of a panic attack. And then it goes away and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, everyone is quite um, petrified for sure. How many girls did you have to kiss Hobart before you were an expert kisser? Or like you were just an expert? You're like, damn, I kiss good. I don't know. I feel like you'd have to kiss some guys too. Right? If you're going to be an expert at kissing, you got to cover the whole thing. <laughs> got to put the whole, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> put the whole bottle in your mouth. <laughs> Double, triple sevens. I just looked at some of the articles on the 15 year old boy who just, you just mentioned amazing reading how the country is spinning the story to deflect from the vaccine, having anything to do with his death. Yeah. Oh dude, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. They got, they got a news anchor in the UK. As many months ago. Okay. What is the answer to that question? Which expert? One? What's the answer? What's your answer the, the to the kissing. expert question? I'm really curious now. How is, many it a, is it a lifelong I, I think, skill? I feel like <laughs> it is a, life, a lifelong to skill. Because I don't feel excellence and kissing. I don't feel like kissing different people is. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's different kissing different people. There you go. That's what I'm trying to say. People kiss yeah. differently. That's if, also what I'm trying to say. <laughs> if two people really like kissing each other, it's some incredible kissing. Like I don't know if liking kissing someone means that they're a good kisser. It's like you, you got to have two people that kiss well. I don't know. You can like someone and like the kissing, but it might not be that great. But, but what you just I mean really is, like them. Right. But I mean, if they like kissing you and you like kissing them, I'm saying it's some incredible kissing. Like some kind of like, time. It's just a, like just unabashed kissing is just wonderful. Like I don't think a lot of people experience that. Just like just un just fucking just just like like have you ever put water? Have you ever put like taken a guzzle of water in your mouth and then put your mouth up against someone else's mouth and spit it back and forth into each other's mouths? <laughs> now one time I, I was I at a party though and I, I I took a shot and not like really close and I spit it into my buddy's mouth. Wow. <laughs> Well, listen, listen. I want to before before I get we called super it a, we called it a bro shot. <laughs> <laughs> before I get super judgmental of that, what was the proof of that alcohol? Because if it's over seventy proof, it's it's fine. If it's under seventy proof, then we were we were actually at a club. We were drinking like some like really bougie Don Julio like at a club. Ah, totally fine, totally fine. Yeah. I've done, I do that with my dog. Is that the closest you've gotten to practicing kissing with a guy? No. <laughs> Next question. Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump. Imagine if they can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're a good dude. Homer. Donald Trump says of Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell should have challenged the election that Donald Trump lost because even back then we had plenty of material to challenge that election. He should have challenged the election. Said again. Um, and then Donald Trump said Chuck Schumer would have challenged it. McConnell didn't have the courage. Said this to his supporters at the Iowa fairgrounds where in Des Moines, Iowa, where he was giving a speech. Trump also teased a potential new slogan for 2024. Here's some real political genius, people. Again, if you think the answer to another shitty 77-year-old politician is another shitty 77-year-old politician, just take this one on for size. Stopping short of officially announcing a bid for re-election, it was supposed to be keep America great, but America's not great right now, says Donald Trump. So we're using the same slogan, make America great again. And we may even add to it, he said, make America great again, again. <laughs> Demand better America of your politicians, whether they're Republican or Democrat, please. Trump is more popular in the state now, this is in Iowa, than when he held office, according to the latest Des Moines Register, Medicom poll. About 53% of Iowan voters have a favorable view and 45% have an unfavorable view of the former Republican president. I bet they'd have a less favorable view if he kissed Mitch McConnell. 
All right. <laughs> so so is he running or is he not? I imagine he will. That's are you so watching, fucking wild. Are you watching any of the um the the Arizona stuff? I have not picked it up, but it'll we'll get let's get in the news. Oh, it's it's fucking it's nuts. They they asked the they asked the election people. So Maricopa County was won by Joe Biden, and I guess in the higher entire history of the country, the 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 country, or Maricopa County, it's ne- I, from what I read, it's never voted Democrat. So that was the first time it ever voted Democrat. A Democrat won in a presidential election in Arizona, Maricopa County. So they're doing an audit there to see what what the fuck happened. And one of the things that was fascinating is that I heard the other day, and I don't know if any of this is true. It's so hard to fucking f- figure out what's true or not. But they asked the guys. In this trial, and I and I'm watching it, that basically, hey, did you erase the results from the hard drive? Because we don't see them on there, and we're trying to do the audit. And the guy's like, No, I didn't erase them. And they're like, Well, where the fuck are they? And they go back and forth. And after fucking a ton of questioning, they get it out that he didn't erase them, but he moved them to a different computer. Mm. But he wasn't gonna volunteer that. They had to fucking hunt that down. And it's like Fuck! Can everyone just be honest on both sides? Let's let like let's just get to the bottom of this. Just show us all the shit so we can say Biden won and it's over. Stop being fucking assholes. Yeah, I show just, us all the shit and let's say Trump. Like, how, stop. How it's are we, just eroding all? It's it's making it not fun to live here. You want to? Here's what really bugs me: we have technology to track people for you know uh, what do they call it? Not vaccination tracking, but um, when people were, when people were close together. Pro, uh, it doesn't matter. We have technology to like track people um, very precisely on whether or not they're vaccinated or not. And we have really advanced technology walking around in our pockets every day in the phone form of a Google phone or Samsung or iPhone. But like, I don't understand why we can't bring that level of excellent technology to voting. And I would love to talk to some expert on this who's like involved in like voting technology and processes. Cause it's like, it should be as simple as like, I can vote from my phone with dual authentication with multiple thumbprint scans and it sends it in and no one else can fuck with it and it's encrypted and it's like i just don't understand how like so many things are like encrypted and you can't get to this information but like the one thing we can't get right is the most important thing that we do in our entire political process it can, it, but yet we can track whether not people have vaccines down to like exactly where they live and you know i don't know it drives me absolutely nuts but maybe maybe i just proximity yeah thank you spit fire x59 I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. But I don't know. That's sorry. I just had to get that off my chest. Maybe I don't understand it at all, but I think it's one of those things that's so crazy. Like, why don't we have better voting technology if it's that important? Which it is, I think. I think it is too. Mm. At least we don't live in Australia. (laughs) We could live in Florida. You want me to pull us out of this? Yes. We're getting toward the end. Um, It was actually funny that I'm talking about like, why can't we have better voting technology? And and two stories away, we have a Google Chrome hack story. Anyway, a Florida Florida sheriff has advertised on social media some 700 pounds of marijuana that authorities wanted to return to its rightful owner. The sheriff writes, since at the Braverd County Sheriff's Office, we always strive to do the right thing. Our narcotics agents are trying to identify the rightful owner of approximately 770 pounds of marijuana that was seized from a mini storage facility in Vieira. Sheriff Wayne Ive wrote, I mean, trying to identify the rightful owner of the property is the very least we can do, especially since it has a street value of roughly $2 million. The at the ad on Twitter goes on to say, once we properly identify you as the rightful owner, we will gladly return your property and also make sure that both you and your property are kept in a secure area so that no one can try to rip you off. Sheriff Ivy even offered a staycation for the owner to think about exactly how much your lost property means to you. Really what does clever. that mean? What's a staycation? I think he's saying you're going to be you know, confined to prison and arrested. Oh. Uh, this is just a really <laughs> clever way... Um, to try and identify um, the owner of all this marijuana so they can um, put them in the clink. <laughs> oh, so this is sarcasm. Sarcasm. They yep. don't really want to give yeah, it back. Yeah, that took me a second. No, they do not want to give it back. I was like, man, weed is really, really legal there. <laughs> really legal. Yeah, a whole 770 <laughs> pounds of it. Yep. Asshole. Not you. Savan, do you still friend. smoke weed? No, I haven't smoked. Or like eaten. eat it or like consume no. it? No. I don't do any of that shit. I haven't smoked 
or I haven't smoked weed in how old am I? I'm 49. I haven't smoked weed in well over 20 years. And what it's, it's fucking crazy. Probably like 10 years ago, I was at a party and I got drunk. And there were these brownies, lemon brownies or something, lemon something on the table. I love lemon and I, squares. And I or is it lemon squares? Maybe. I That's hope so. They're great. And, and I knew that they had marijuana in them and I knew to stay away from them. But I'd gotten really drunk. It was late and pretty much everyone had gone to sleep or passed out at the party. I was like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm just going to eat one of these. I'm really fucking hungry. And I ate one. And oh, did I just mute CFK? No, she muted herself. And uh, um, I felt horrible. Coughing? It was the worst experience of my fucking life. It was worse than it was, it was horrible. No, I'm pretty um I'm very sober. No sugar, no weed, no alcohol. I had a shot of tequila last night in a like three that I drank over like a four hour period, um, watching all the fights, UFC and the boxing match in a huge, huge cup with like two cans of sparkling water. And I didn't enjoy it. Couldn't even taste the tequila and I didn't enjoy it. Like my eyes started getting heavy and shit. It's funny. I tell people I don't drink and then I mention I have a shot of tequila and I was like, you said you don't drink. You said you don't drink. Yeah, I don't fucking smoke cigarettes either. But if I'm in the room with someone smoking cigarettes, I'm getting the smoke in me. Like, yeah, I have a shit. I, I will taste it or remind myself how much I hate it once a month or once every two months or once every three months. Fucking weirdos. Just because Hobart kissed a boy doesn't mean he's gay. He just kissed a boy. He's empathizing. <laughs> He's practicing. God damn. Okay. Try the ginger ale in Colorado. Lemon bombs. Why? Do you smoke weed? Do you do do you do edibles? You don't seem like you don't seem like you do any of that shit, Kit. Uh yeah, occasionally. Yeah. I get wild. Come on. What's the what that's not wild. I go to bed at, I go to bed at 7 30 every night. I get wild. I actually use weed to go to sleep occasionally. Like there's some uh weed bowls that uh Greg gets actually that uh oh man, I'm I'm getting in trouble now. Um but yeah, they have a little indica in them and they're just really good. They just make me calm the fuck down. Come to my circus so I can rape and kill you six six six. Was blocked. Can we ban <laughs> oh that's uh, was hidden by the oh yeah. You could message deleted by seven. Oh, that was quick, Souza. Blasted him. Why would someone do that? I don't know. You said like we needed trolls and we're getting them. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really trolling. What's trolling? Hold on, Hobart. I want to look up the exact. That's, that's gone beyond trolling. That's uh. I feel like there are different levels of trolling, right? There's like the intellectual trolls and then there's those guys. Person who makes a deliberately offensive or provocative online post. Oh, that was trolling then. I'm wrong. You're Bam. right. <laughs> I don't like trolls. I take that back. <laughs> Troller or a shit poster. Uh, I don't like the R word. Um, trolls. Can you not use the R word? Because that really triggers me. Weed. Yeah. So what were you saying? Greg did a, is it legal in Australia? <laughs> Greg brings a weed bowl. Oh, that's why we can't talk about it. It's illegal. It's illegal there. Isn't prostitution yeah. legal there? Yeah. Isn't well, it weird all the different I, social I think, um, structures. You guys can bone chicks for cash or dudes for cash, but you can't smoke weed and we can't bone dudes or chicks for cash, but we can smoke. You, I think you can like, it's decriminalized, I think, or it's on its way to becoming legalized. It's somewhere in that ballpark. Has a woman ever called? My dick is big, nigga. I want it in a man's mouth, bro. Do you like my name? Jeez Louise. I just laughed because I knew you were going to read it out loud. <laughs> Barnes, Ryan, Emma, how can I help you? Welcome to hey, what's the... Up? Yeah. Are you... Is that you in our comment section? <laughs> no, I, I ain't coming at the day. Oh, okay. Oh, funky accent. Don't say anything else. Where is he from, guys? Guess. Don't. Which, which I've been up to today. No, you weren't supposed to say anything else. Why not? Because we're trying to figure out what country you're from. Oh, I'm from the United States. What? I'm from the United States. Which state are you from? Louisiana. All right, makes sense. Okay, hey, how are you? <laughs> we're coming We're coming over in a little bit. It's when the show's over to have a, 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 a crawfish, crawfish... Throw out the tarp, and we're coming over to get some crawfish. Uh, we're in the crawfish season right now, my boy. Oh, damn it. Man, that, that that's in like February, March. 
All right. I'm going to save the date right here. Save February to go to Emma's house for crawfish. What, Emma, uh, what affi- this, is, this is born. What? I know. I know. <laughs> what affiliate do you go to? 42 CrossFit. 42 CrossFit? Fortitude. Fortitude. Got it. And uh, how did you find CrossFit? Um, I was traveling with uh, the baseball team at my uh, school. And one of my teammates uh, brought it up to me, and I just went and tried it and liked it. And, 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 and are you still in school? Yeah, I go to LSU. How old are you? 24. And are you still playing baseball? No, nah, I don't I don't travel with them no more. And, it's, it's just, and what are you studying at LSU? Uh, health and physical education. Oh, sweet. And what are you going to do with that? Are you going to be a teacher? I want to try to be a coach. For for baseball? Uh, either football or baseball. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you, I, I, I hope you succeed. I hope you don't. Uh, did you take your L1 yet? No, I, I, I might take it in uh, either in uh, this uh, Christmas break or sometime in the uh, spring. Good on you. Will your school pay for that? Nah, I gotta pay for my on my own. Sorry to hear that. Um, uh, what 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 was your name, Emma? Ryan. Barnes. Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Hey, um, Kate, what do you think? Did can does he sound like he's from the United States to you? What what's the Australian ear here when Ryan speaks? Um, like someone that probably would be from Louisiana. <laughs> does he sound like he smokes weed or does edibles? It sounds like he could be a little high right now. Maybe that's why he called. Were you calling uh, because we were talking about weed? Maybe. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Kate's good. <laughs> Holy shit, she's a keeper. <laughs> I'm not high right now, but last Saturday I was drunk and high. <laughs> last what Saturday. Do they, what do they call that? Isn't that called something when you're drunk and high? Yeah, vomit. Is there a name for it? I have no idea what it's called. <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? No. Do you have a boyfriend? Nah, I'm straight. Do you have a nice body? Uh, I think so. Was it nice before you did CrossFit? Uh, no, nah, it, it was okay. But now it's nice. Yeah. Are you willing to share it? I'm a badass. Well, who? Just anyone, oh, just any man. girl, any, anyone, any, any, like anyone. It depends on the girl. All right. All right. Cause <laughs> you don't have it. You don't have a girlfriend. You have a good body and you're straight. And and I'm just, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. It's a mystery. Oh, but are you okay. monogamous? <laughs> no. Sarah, Sarah goes, he's from CrossFit faded. He's crossfaded. Crossfaded. <laughs> 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 All right, all right, uh, Mr. Barnes. Is there anything else you'd like to say? We have to finish this show, but you should call in every. Uh, you should call in every week. We have unfinished business for sure. I bet. I've been. Uh, I was just calling to see what you was up to because I missed you the last couple of weeks because uh, school got busy and stuff. So I uh, hope y'all uh, have a good night, and uh, I hope to catch a uh, show next week. Cool. You're a gentleman and a scholar. We're, we're, we were better the first hour. And we've just been augering in real slow as the coffee's wearing off. Ugh, y'all drink coffee? Yeah, you don't drink coffee? Nah, that's just disgusting. Oh, do you drink coffee, Hobart? You don't drink coffee either, Hobart? I do a little bit, but I agree, and I think the taste is terrible. Wow. What do what, what yeah. sort of stimulants do you take, Ryan? I take uh, pre-workout and, pr- and protein powder. Pre-workout? Yeah. I'm sure that's got caffeine in it, right? Yeah, I take the pro- I take the podium product. Oh shit! Plug in, plug yeah. in the boy Matt Fraser. Hell yeah! All right, brother. Peace and love. All right. Stay good. Yes, I'm sorry we bored you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Um. Well, I have some commentary. Lay it on us, because Craig, no. Craig White is calling <laughs> for one more news story. One yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. 
All right. You, how far up you want to get? Yeah, let's finish on a high note. I'm going to give you two right here real quick. Uh, nope, we're going to go right for this, the, the money maker. Gas lawnmowers and leaf blowers. California will <clears throat> outlaw the sale of new gas-powered lawnmowers and leaf blowers and chainsaws as early as 2024 under a new law signed by Governor, Governor of California, Gavin Newsom, on Saturday. These new portable gas-powered generators also, excuse me, new portable gas-powered generators also must be zero emissions by 2028, which also could be delayed at the discretion of the state agency. Someone interviewed in the article said the state has set aside, you know, a whopping $30 million to help professional landscapers and gardeners, because I'm sure that will cover all of the professional landscapers and gardeners in California using gas-powered equipment. $30 $30 million to help professional landscapers and gardeners make the transition from gas-powered equipment to zero-emission equipment because that electricity just comes out of thin air and you don't have to use any gas to power those batteries and charge them up. <laughs> However, an industry representative said that's woefully inadequate, thank God they said this, for the estimated 50,000 small businesses that will affect that will be affected by the law. Matt Souza, quick math. What is $30 million divided by 50,000? For example... Yeah. A gas-powered commercial riding lawnmower costs between $7,000 and $11,000, while its zero emissions equivalent costs more than twice that amount. This legislation, there we go, that's a word, legislation was opposed by Republican lawmakers as well as some Democrats who expressed concern about how residents in rural areas, especially when it comes to the state requirement, that portable generators be zero emission. The agency began working on the regulations after Savan's governor, Newsom, issued an executive order in September of 2020 that required the state to transition to 100% zero emission off-road vehicles and equipment. By 2035, at least he said this, where feasible. <laughs> no one no one in their right mind, and, and, and we could be wrong, but no one in their right mind believes that any of the recycling stuff actually helps the environment. It's just all a fucking – it feels like it's all a fucking scam. No one's ever done the news story and let us see, okay, what happens to – where does all the electricity come from? All the electricity that's, that's needed to power all of these Teslas, what are they doing? Why is that cleaner? Are they just burning gas somewhere else to fire up a generator to then charge your Tesla? Are they burning coal somewhere else? Like no one knows. It's such a fucking scam. None of it is fucking explained to us. It's Have you guys such... seen that video of Greta Thunberg recently? She was at oh, some she's event. A fucking rock. She's a she. Fucking... She was so great. She responds to all these speakers going fucking carbon neutral, blah blah blah, zero trend, like zero whatever, blah blah blah. Just starts her whole talk with just being like blah I blah blah. That. It's fucking epic. I I can't stand her. <laughs> what if what if next week we do a little expose long form feature on recycling? Yeah, I'd like to know about recycling. I'd all like right, to know about it. what happens to all all those. Oh, like, where's the electricity coming from for all this electric shit? All right, we'll, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna trim where, down the news stories, and that's where what we're gonna throw the batteries on. away. Did you ever see that documentary? That um, it came out a couple years ago. They, I think they pulled it off of YouTube because it was so fucking crazy. It was made. Michael Moore was the producer. Yeah, it was like the opposite of the inconvenient truth. It was like uh, yes, it was I, basically saying what a huge scam is that they're basically all of these clean burning fuel plants all over the United States that basically they were cutting down trees in the Amazon and importing them hmm. to burn and to make oh it was fucking it was so bad and the people behind it were like you're here like it was bad it was really 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 bad I don't know if it's true what's it called. Know. Uh, okay, I'll look it up. I Michael Moore um is he still like extremely unhealthy and overweight? Yeah, he, Looking yeah, like he's, he's like, about to die. Do you know when people get men get so fat like they start to become androgynous? It's mm. a, it's actually it's like a huge problem in the United States. Too much estrogen, of, right? Yeah, he's he's like that. He's he's full-blown androgynous. He did a uh dietary sex change. <laughs> it's true. And and actually um it's if called a little kid convenient sequel, I think. No. It, if little boys, yeah. the, the studies on boys, little boys who get obese at a young age and what happens to their testicles and penises is fucking scary. So scary. Um, 
they don't develop fully as men because of that, because of the, they ate too much sugar and refined carbohydrates. True story. It's not, that's not, that's not. He does uh, make pretty good documentaries though. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's a hard worker. He's pretty wild. Two hours and 24 minutes. Is that our longest show? Yeah, close to. <laughs> Last week's was similar. Craig White's mm-hmm. making Craig White's making fun of Ryan. He called it protein powder. Protein. <laughs> God, that guy's accent was strong. I think I think Sarah Sarah wins my the my favorite comments award for the evening. Other than that bot who jumped in. <laughs> that is not a bot. Who said that's a bot? Like, what do you mean a bot? Like How a could bot. Who was my like mom? That. <laughs> just, just dropping. Chill out, bomb. <laughs> Hilarious, though. Hmm. Oh, what? What? So, what's up with next Sunday? You gonna be here next Sunday, Hobart? I'm I'm ready to rock next Sunday. Yeah, I mean, we still have a lot we didn't cover. We didn't talk about the Fury Wilder fight. We didn't talk about the oh. iPhone candy launcher case, Google Chrome hacks, the Congress and the debt ceiling, dark matter going down in Australia, Australian social media. I mean, oh, we man. just. I ordered a new iPhone 13 Pro. Good. I, I just there was an article What's I read. Camera is better than the iPhone 12. So uh, yeah, is that the main job, difference? <laughs> I guess I didn't get the iPhone 12. It was the first iPhone I never owned. I think the battery is a little bit better. I imagine the processing power is a, a little bit more powerful. Which you know, for Savannah run only fans, who cares? But uh, yeah. Um, tomorrow I have John Berzink on, world's greatest arm wrestler. If you have not seen the movie Pooling John, that's cool. You should see Pooling John. Uh, I think he spelled his name wrong. That's Brazank. <laughs> he quickly pulled it down. <laughs> and uh, on Tuesday, I have Steffi Cohen on. She is the hybrid athletics powerhouse that Matt Fraser signed up with to distribute his programming. And she has 25, I think, weightlifting world records. Um, and on Wednesday, we have Guillaume Guillermo who just signed up with Mayhem. And I don't know what's going on Thursday or Friday. Something cool. Have Hobart and Kate back on. Mm. Mm. Anything <laughs> else? Sousa? No. We're like a car that just runs out of gas. I mean, I like I said, we're sitting on six stories. but I, I say we like- save them. I feel like we hit it all, and I feel like it was nice. How do you feel, Kate? Did you interrupt yeah, him today? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Leave him wanting more. Will you tell us when it's – like if I make a Greg crack and you're not with Greg anymore, will you tell me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, no, that, maybe maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just see how far you go. <laughs> you have three kids with another dude. They're all in the background <laughs> like eight years from now. I'm still, still giving jokes. me shit about Greg. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Sousa, thank you. How was this show, Sousa? Good? 